Good. Finally, you're also live on YouTube. So yeah, thank you so much for all of you being here. Good, 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 good. So once again, this is the health and wellness sport. I am Dr. Lewing from that sport, and I'm excited to have all of you here for this conversation today. And from the advertisement that we made today, all of you understand already we're going to talk about lipid, uh, no, not lipid, uh, vitamins. What are vitamins? What are their roles in our bodies? What are their types? What are their benefits? And if you have deficiencies in these vitamins, what will you suffer from? Above all, in excess, what can these vitamins do to you? Or is there uh, any benefit why they should be maintained in a normal range? Because on the excess, they have their effects. And on the lower side, they also have their deficiency effects. So that is what we're going to handle today. And possibly you get to understand why you're going through that vitamin deficiency. Okay. So welcome aboard. I already see SE254 around. That's a very good uh, thing to see around. Karibu sana. It's always a pleasure having you around. And you always come in early. Good. So I'll go straight to it. And I hope you prepare those questions about vitamin deficiencies so that when I clear this conversation, we can bring you on and we have a conversation about vitamin deficiencies. So I'm going to talk about both basically vitamins in general. And then I'm going to make it uh, interesting by tagging the reasons why you're eating that healthy meal, but you're not getting the adequate vitamins from that meal as you would have loved that today. Okay, so why are you eating healthy keto and you're still in vitamin deficiencies? That is what I'll talk about. Edwin Mayebe, Karibu Sana. Chef Kori Rinet, welcome aboard. And everybody who is tuning in on our YouTube, welcome, son, and thank you so much. Now, from the word vitamins, we used to think that these are vital amines. So when I was I was a student, that's what we were told. They were vital, vital amines. So you just divide the name vitamins to vital and then amines. But that is not the case again. And we will realize that as we go ahead with the video. So vitamins are micronutrients. The rest, the fats, the carbohydrates, and the protein, those are the macro. Macro to mean big. And the vitamins and minerals are the micro, which means they are smaller. Now, this micro, they are essential in our systems. But the point is, with vitamins, we cannot synthesize them. Our bodies have no capability of synthesizing these vitamins, and therefore we have to get them from the diets. This is why we talk about dietary modifications on a daily basis. And we do that because we understand that most of you are eating food for the sake of it. Nobody's, most people are not eating foods uh, to help them get the nutritional value out of food. That's why we are so addicted to garlic, which totally has no nutritional value, but we still consume it. So, yeah, so vitamins are basically in two groups. We have the fat-soluble vitamins and the water-soluble vitamins. This is interesting because when you talk about the fat-soluble vitamins, you cannot absorb them without consuming fats. Just from the name, fat-soluble vitamins, it basically means you need fats for you to absorb these vitamins. So they are soluble in fat, and therefore when you absorb this fat, you it's easy for them to go into the system. Now, most of you confuse fat with oils. Your cooking oil is not fat. That is a seed oil, that is a vegetable oil. Okay, the liantos, the kimbos and stuff, these are not uh, saturated fats, they are unsaturated or polyunsaturated fatty acids, which are basically seed oils. And they come from seeds, they don't come from vegetables. So those cannot help you absorb fat-soluble vitamins. Okay, they'll actually cause a deficiency in absorption of these fat-soluble vitamins because they cause uh, the leaky gut. They inflame your gut and therefore you cannot absorb nutrients in their adequate amounts. That is not good for your health. So now the water-soluble vitamins are basically the B vitamins and the vitamin C, simple. The fat-soluble vitamins, some call them DECA, others call them ADEC. So A, D, E, and K, those are the fat-soluble vitamins. And the water-soluble vitamins, the B vitamins, and vitamin C. Okay? Now, I want you to note that on the B vitamins is where there are more, more, more deficiencies come in, at the B vitamins. And B vitamins being water-soluble, that means they cannot be stored for longer in the system. That's why we have so many deficiency conditions for B vitamins, because they are soluble in water, and therefore, they can easily be excreted because the kidneys does the job of excreting anything that is soluble in water through urine. So water-soluble vitamins are excreted through urine. That's the reason why we have so many deficiencies. 
okay? And also, that's the reason why we have very few toxicity issues with B vitamins and vitamin C, because they're excreted anyway. So the, the, they cannot accumulate in the system and cause you toxicities. But for the fat-soluble vitamins, first of all, they bind onto fat, then they are absorbed. Once they are absorbed, they are stored in the system. For example, vitamin A is stored in the liver, and this can lead to high toxicity because most of the fat-soluble vitamins are not excreted through urine because they are fat-soluble. And therefore, when they are retained, they cause deficiency, uh, they cause uh, a toxicity because of accumulating in the system. So that is the major difference that you should know, that you should know that water-soluble vitamins can be excreted out of the body through urine, and the fat-soluble vitamins can be stored in the body, and then accumulation of it can cause toxicity. On that note, I want you to know vitamin C, which is the ascorbic acid. However, ascorbic acid is just a component of vitamin C, the covering. So vitamin C has vitamin K, vitamin P, vitamin J, copper, and then all these four are covered in a sheath or a clothing that is called the ascorbic acid. Therefore, vitamin C on its own is not, is not ascorbic acid. It's just, ascorbic acid is just a portion of vitamin C, but scientifically, it's known as ascorbic acid. Now, when you go to the pharmacy to buy vitamin C tablets, please understand that they are non-absorbable. They are not vitamin C. They are ascorbic acid, and, is that, and for that matter, they are synthetic ascorbic acid. Therefore, they are not vitamin C. So do not go to the pharmacy buying vitamin C and hoping that it will help you recover from those uh, gum bleeding, that scurvy, those uh, uh, skin bleeding, and uh, low immunity. It will not help you because it is a water-soluble vitamin for the first, uh, in the first case. And number two, the ascorbic acid tablets are non-absorbable and they do not have any uh, essential value because they are synthetic. Okay? So that is the point. You need to understand that. Do not confuse vitamin C, the natural one, and the ascorbic acid. Also remember that vitamin C, the structure of vitamin C, if you Google it, resembles glucose. There is a very good, a, clean, a very near resemblance, resemblance with the uh, uh, sugar. And therefore, the body is not stupid. The body will only take something that gives it a reward. Okay? So the body likes quick fix and it enjoys sweet things. So the body will take sugar and discard vitamin C. And that's the reason why fruits are not the best sources of vitamin C. Again, vitamin C, too much of vitamin C, if you, let's say you consume tons and tons of vitamin C in your system, ascorbic acid is metabolized and then converted to uh, oxalic acid. This means that you start accumulating oxalic acid in the, in the kidneys. And then if you have calcium going through the kidneys, because calcium is reabsorbed and metabolized in the kidney, you will get to calcium oxalate stones, and therefore you will start getting uh, kidney stones. So yes, vitamin C can, in excess can predispose you to kidney stones. Okay. However, on the lighter note, those people who have calcium oxalate stones already, you can use vitamin to help you uh, dissolve the calcium oxalate stones, but it can also worsen it. So be very careful with what you're taking when you have calcium oxalate stones. And if you intend to prevent the calcium oxalate stones in the kidneys, then do not uh, overconsume vitamin C. It will be toxic to you because of ascorbic acid. And this also happens mostly with people who are using the tablets because the tablets are synthetic ascorbic acid. They do not have the other four components, the copper, uh, the vitamin J, the vitamin P. They don't have those. They only It only comes as ascorbic acid, the covering. That is one thing that can expose you to kidney problems. So avoid that. So therefore, uh, if you have water-soluble vitamins being excreted, we already explained that that can basically lead you into no toxicity. There will, there will not be any toxicity for these vitamins. And if there is, it will be very minimal as compared to the fat-soluble vitamins. But I'll concentrate so much on the fat-soluble vitamins because of the mistakes that happen during consumption of these fat-soluble vitamins. So let's put that aside and handle the B vitamins. Now, B vitamins come with different names and don't even care about the names. I don't know, vitamin B1, vitamin B2, B3, B4 is skipped, we have B5, we have B6, we have B7, B8 is skipped, we have B9, and then we have B12. So the other vitamins, they're like B10, B11, and B8, and B4 have been skipped because they do not qualify, they do not suit the criteria of classifying vitamins. And one day we'll talk about that criteria because it's an in-depth or a deep uh, classification. So they were omitted from the B-soluble vitamins because they are not qualifying for the criteria that uh, actually classifies these vitamins, and therefore we don't have them. Now, 
for the rest like uh like the vitamin b1 you already know that people who are who, who drink so much alcohol can get into vitamin b1 deficiency because alcohol depletes vitamin b1 okay and that's what we call thiamine so i'll take you through slow by slow until you understand it so vitamin b1 is what we call thiamine i don't want you to cram those names i just want you to understand that there's vitamin b1 and vitamin b1 deficiency is caused by alcohol consumption so you kill the liver you cause an alcoholic fat liver and therefore you cannot metabolize vitamin b1 and therefore it becomes non-bioavailable in the system and therefore you go into deficiency of that and this deficiency condition for vitamin b1 is called beriberi it's a beriberi disease this disease is basically uh the symptoms will be ataxia you have those uncoordinated muscle uh movements you have glossitis so a very bad tongue those people who have a, a tearing tongue you have heart problems and the stroke so you can imagine on the on, on the extreme ends vitamin b1 plays a very important role in heart function you can have also loss of memory and nerve problems so people who drink alcohol they experience all these symptoms that's why they shake their hands all the time one that we call the Wernicke's Kovnikov syndrome they shake their hands until they take alcohol when they start gaining now back there their muscle movements that's ataxia basically and for you to reverse that first of all you have to drop the alcohol and then afterwards you take a vitamin b shots and i also want you to understand that vitamins are very present in foods food substances are very rich in this vitamin so you can get them as supplements and you can get them as foods however most supplements are synthetic so we don't want that we want something that the body can easily assimilate digest absorb and then convert it uh, or metabolize it to help you perform its function on the b vitamins vitamin b2 what we call riboflavin okay riboflavin now riboflavin is also the one that is very common in people who have that tearing tongue those who have ridges on their tongue and looks like their tongue is tearing apart that is vitamin b2 deficiency now another one is vitamin b3 which is the niacin or niacin whichever the english that you use now the vitamin b3 is very ne neglected most times you neglect it but it is very important because vitamin b3 uh, the niacin is actually very important in uh, absorption and metabolism of an amino acid called tryptophan for those of you who have been here for the longest time uh, possible they know that the amino acid called tryptophan what it plays a very important role in sleep regulation in uh, biological clock regulation and also in fighting depression and mental health conditions so if you have a deficiency in vitamin b3 then definitely you start having these problems with the uh, psychosis and lack of sleep the insomnia and stuff so the best option here is to take a vitamin b3 supplement or diets that are rich in vitamin b we will also understand the reasons why if you take these supplements one they cannot be absorbed but if you take them through diet why are we not absorbing them so i'll talk about that the reason why you don't absorb these vitamins I'll talk about it as we go ahead. So you'll have sleep problems, you'll have uh, an increase in LDL, which basically indicates that there is a deficiency uh, or an inflammation in your whole system. Okay, so LDL is not a type of cholesterol, it's just a carrier of cholesterol, and it carries cholesterol from the liver to the tissues that are already inflamed. So don't confuse. When somebody tells you LDL and HDL, you think these are the types of cholesterol, they are not. These are the carriers of cholesterol so ldl carries cholesterol from the liver to inflamed tissues to help you heal from inflammation and uh, and and ld and, and hdl carries the cholesterol from the tissues back to the liver for storage and detoxification so niacin plays a very important role in increasing your your, your healthy cholesterol in your system and then now again plays a role in uh, inhibiting mental health conditions because i told you of tryptophan the amino acid now you cannot absorb amino acids if your gut is problematic so even if you eat those eggs you eat that meat but you have a messy gut your hcl is not uh, as concentrated as possible you have ulcers and gastritis you've done a gastric bypass you will not absorb vitamin b3 in its adequate amounts and remember also after you convert tryptophan to serotonin the complete metabolism will lead you to something called melatonin again melatonin is the one that controls the biological clock so therefore if you lack this sleep disorders will be there mental health conditions and depression anxiety palpitations all this will be there and they'll lead you into problems including epilepsy also so vitamin b3 is very important and when you lack vitamin b3 that's what we call pellagra and pellagra basically is just a syndrome this, this, these symptoms that i'm mentioning are actually coming as a result of a, a major disease that is called pellagra or pellagra which is dermatitis skin problems 
which is the, uh, uh, dementia, the loss of memory, which is sleep problems, and finally you die, definitely. Okay? So yes, it's neglected, but it's one vitamin that uh, I think God plays, uh, plays a very uh, massive role on this one, that most people don't suffer from plague, even though they have vitamin deficiencies. It is very, very neglected. And this is also uh, vitamin B3 deficiency. Most times, if you see those people who have these issues, are people who are on super ugali. You consume too much corn, you consume seed oils, and then you consume too much wheat. These three are the major culprits in malabsorption of vitamin B3. And that has to be has to be, has to change. Number five, number four, because we don't have vitamin B4. Thank you so much, Awilo. We don't have vitamin B4. So vitamin B5 is called panto, pantothenic acid. From the word pantothenic acid, panto basically means everywhere. Then the thenic means strength. So this basically tells you that vitamin B5 is the most abundant of the B vitamins. Every food has vitamin B5. So it's hard for you to go into deficiency of vitamin B5 because it's literally everywhere. Okay? So we cannot talk about something that doesn't give us so much deficiencies. So we leave it and we go to vitamin B6. B6, pyridoxine. Now, pyridoxine, for those of you who know, if you have suffered TB before, you've basically used this drug. If you are uh, on HIV therapy, you've also used this drug, which is vitamin B. That's a drug. That's a synthetic product of vitamin B6. It's not natural. It's a synthetic product. And we'll talk about the reason why it's being used in this. So vitamin B6 is basically called pyridoxine. And those people who ate too much mushrooms, you've heard of uh, these people, basically in the West, people who use mushrooms to get high. Okay? Aphrodisiac effect that comes with eating mushrooms. So these people should be given vitamin B6, and they are given that because vitamin B6 reverses the toxic effects of mushrooms and mushroom poisoning. Also, it reverses morning sickness. For women who are pregnant, if you're experiencing that morning sickness all the time, uh, now it's the time for you to start con con consuming vitamin B6 in plenty, whether the synthetic or the dietary vitamin B6. Okay? And then again, people who have Parkinson's, those people who walk like they're going to fall uh, in phone, natembean kama watenda kwanguka. Those old, the elderly people who have uh, uh, dopamine uh, deficiency. But dopamine is a very interesting hormone because on deficiency you get this Parkinson's disease. But on the extra now you get into uh, uh, CNS hyperactivity. That's a problem. And again, dopamine can lead you to addictions. So do not stimulate dopamine all the time. So vitamin B6 helps you to regulate dopamine levels. And therefore the Parkinson's, the people who have Parkinson's, the likes of Muhammad Ali, you remember the boxer who was hit on the head con uh, continuously and then suffered dopamine uh, toxicity. So they had these Parkinson's. So they shuffle, they shuffle, then they, like they're losing balance. They want to fall. So they take small steps, but shuffling. Okay, that's what we call the Parkinson's disease. So it helps you in that balance disorders. Also epilepsy. Remember also epilepsy is part of this uh, shootings of neurons in the, in the brain. So it's abnormal shootings in the brain. So therefore you need vitamin B6 to stabilize those neurons and above all people who have anemia okay so vitamin b6 plays a very important role in anemia so if you suffer all those conditions or if you have a relative who is suffering from epilepsy parkinson's anemia loss of memory uh and then and also those who use mushrooms and, and mushroom poisoning now it's time for you to start giving them vitamin b6 and i repeat both the synthetic or the dietary modification of vitamin b6 but if they're already suffering from like say like parkinson's it is hard for you to start regulating their diets for you to get uh, instant healing. So you can start with the synthetic vitamin B6 as you introduce dietary modifications and fasting. Because also these people are challenged. Like somebody who is epileptic, you can't, you can't just introduce uh, prolonged fasting. You need to take them through stepwise modifications. You push their breakfast towards midday, slow by slow. As they adapt that, you can be using vitamin B6 uh, tablets, the synthetic ones. Okay, So that makes a lot of sense. So people who are on TB medication... If you are using a drug called isoniazid, most of you who have used TB therapy, me being part of them, I suffered TB sometimes back and I had to use the treatment for six months. So I really wonder why do we why do we vaccinate people with BCG, yet these people will still get an exposure and then be predisposed to TB? Does it mean that the vaccine is a waste of time? We will question that some, some other day in another live or another video. So yeah, because the same same people who still have TB vaccines are the same, same people who will still suffer from tuberculosis. And therefore, 
we don't understand why we vaccinate people from TB, yet they still end up getting the tuberculosis infection. So if you're using a drug for TB, if you're using drugs for HIV, there are drugs that basically cause uh, a deficiency in vitamin B6. And therefore, you start feeling the peripheral neuropathy, the numbness, the tingling, so those, those, those piercings. Okay, you start feeling confusion. Okay, and even anemia. That's why they come with very yellow eyes and the jaundice. So this basically tells you there's a deficiency in vitamin B6, and therefore they, for you to give somebody isoniazid, then they have to take you uh, vitamin B6 for it to reverse the symptoms of isoniazid. But if it gets too extreme and you only get the yellow eyes and the yellow skin, the jaundice, then you have to stop that therapy because now that tells you starting to kill the liver, and that is hepatitis. So we don't want you to treat TB and then end up coming back with uh, hepatitis, which is very difficult to treat. Okay, and therefore give them vitamin B6. Uh, in form of pyridoxine, and they will recover from these symptoms. Uh, I think that's 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 has sink, sunk home. But this is for the healthcare pro providers. You already know these things. And for those people who have even using these drugs for HIV and TB, and you've never went back to hospital for a checkup or stuff, but you, if you look in the mirror, you're seeing your eyes turning uh, yellowish. It's time for you to go back and tell them, hey, I need to change some things here. Okay, so that they know that medication that they start giving you as an alternative so the deficiency definitely peripheral neuropathy before i even forget metformin which is a drug for thank you so much elizabeth okongo for the super chat today people are feeling blessed already you already sent me a super chat early thank you so much for that good as we proceed that is elizabeth okongo thank you very much now uh, as we continue those people who are on metformin, the diabetes drugs, metformin actually inhibits the absorption of vitamin B6 and vitamin B12. Therefore, diabetes can cause you peripheral neuropathy, okay? But metformin can also, as a side effect of metformin, you will get uh, peripheral neuropathy. And this is because of vitamin B6 deficiency. Therefore, if you're taking drugs for diabetes for more than three months, you are the joke. You are the joke because diabetes can never be treated with drugs. It will be treated with dietary modifications and healthy lifestyle and fasting and exercise. Those are the major ways to treat diabetes. But drugs for diabetes will cause you uh, more diabetes because they are actually storing more sugar in the system. And then these drugs will also mess up your system through side effects. And one of the side effects for metformin, which is a standard drug for pre-diabetes and diabetes. And also now, women who have PCOS, PCOS, they are given this drug called metformin to help them lower the blood sugars. This one can cause you vitamin B12 deficiency and therefore you start feeling the burning sensation in your feet, the cold feet, the tingling like somebody's piercing your feet. Okay, So you need to be very cautious about that. And therefore the side effects of, or the deficiency for vitamin B6, one is peripheral neuropathy, the numbness. Number two is anemia because it's involved in, full, in synthesis of uh, RBCs, the red blood cells. And then we have an increase in homocysteine. Homocysteine is basically an amino acid that is very dangerous to your system. Okay? Homocysteine has to be cleared from the system. And you clear homocysteine from the system by fasting and healthy keto. But homocysteine, when it goes up, then you have a chance to get uh, low immunity. You will have deep venous thrombosis. This is basically a condition that will lead you to heart problems. And then you have heart problems and stroke. Then you have joint problems. Those who have arthritis and painful joints and painful back problems every time. And then kyphosis. Kyphosis is basically those people who have like a tilting spinal cord. There are people who have a tilting spinal cord and they look like, okay, that angle. That is what you call kyphosis. So these are basically symptoms of vitamin B6 deficiency. Yeah, let me take a breather before I continue. I hope I hope we are, we are together, we are understanding this, and I hope you are preparing your questions. If at all you are suffering from these conditions that I'm mentioning, prepare those questions so that we can answer it uh, when you bring you in. So we are at B6. The next has to be vitamin B7. B7 is what we call biotin. Now B7 is very present in the egg yolks. Remember, most B vitamins are rich in the egg yolk. They are rare. They are very present in the egg yolk. So the egg yolk carries a lot of vitamins. Please never be lied to that the egg has bad cholesterol and it will cause you heart problems. The egg has no problem. Enjoy your eggs. I just ate six eggs right now plus uh, fish fillets. The best meal you can ever eat, eggs, superfoods, the eggs, the liver, and uh, they come second to the oysters and also the breast milk. 
So the eggs, the liver, oysters, and the breast milk, these are the four superfoods that we ever have on earth. And they're cheap. They're affordable. So eat those eggs in plenty. Do six to eight eggs if you're a man because of testosterone. Ladies, do four to six eggs every day. They are satiety foods. They are rich in nutrients and micronutrients, and you will enjoy them. And then you cannot crave for eggs. Most of you just crave for carbohydrates, which you totally mess your gut. So vitamin B7, which is called biotin, plays a very important role in your skin, in your hair. So those people who have uh, this uh, small, small hair that zinakaka uh, mavi ambuzi, the rolling hairs and stuff, you are deficient in vitamin B12 and zinc, and therefore you need to raise, you need to up your game on eating the eggs. But those people who go to the gym and then come back and eat a raw egg, you are going into problems because raw egg have a protein that is called avidin. Avidin. Now, avidin blocks the absorption of vitamin B7. So you can imagine you've, et, you've eaten an egg, which is rich in all vitamins, including vitamin B7. And then you eat it raw instead of boiling it or frying it or scrambling it. You eat it raw. Then you get the avidin, which basically blocks the absorption of vitamin B7, the biotin. Now you're going to deficiency of vitamin B7, even though you eat eggs. So please do not eat raw eggs. Do not eat raw eggs. Somebody's asking, hi, doctor, does an egg you give chest pains? There is no relationship. There's no, it doesn't even make sense. Enjoy your eggs. Chest pains are, is a symptom of some other disease, but eggs don't give you diseases. Eggs actually help you heal diseases. So unlearn. So please do not eat raw eggs. My gym people, you want to take those raw eggs, you want to look like a pro, you want to eat a raw egg plus the shell because you think that is rich calcium and stuff. You are actually missing out on the biotin, which plays a very important role in your skin and your, your hair development. Okay, ladies who want hair that is not brittle, that breaks all the time, consume those egg yolks. And it's rich in egg yolks, not the egg white, the egg yolks, but you can eat plus the egg white. Okay, so it plays a role in protein synthesis, it plays a role in hair <laughs> development, and those who also want beards, it plays a role in cellular replication. So, children need to eat the eggs in plenty. Okay, feed your children with eggs every day as breakfast. Don't give them margarine, don't give them bread. Brown and white bread are the same. Don't give them anything, no chapatis, no cereals. The Witabix, do not avoid them. Let your children not eat those processed foods. Give your children uh, eggs, give them avocados, give them sweet potatoes, give them liver, give them mamena, the fish, the meats. All these children love fatty meats, but we, we deny them. So vitamin B7 is rich in the liver, it's rich in uh, diet yeast, okay? The one that comes from Bragg's. This is not a paid advert, but Bragg's produces very rich foods. The yeast and also the apple cider vinegar. So those are the brands for yeast and uh, SEV that you can take. Milk is a poor source of vitamins. Leave milk to children or babies and calves. If you have to take milk, go back and suckle your mother. Don't change the species. Because human beings are very notorious. They are the only ones who change the species when it comes to milk. Why don't you suckle your mother when you're an adult? Why did you lose milk teeth and then grow these teeth? It's because you're bound or you're supposed to take to move from milk to other healthy foods. My friends who are vegetarians, you will miss out on vitamin B7. Again, you have canines, this teeth, for a reason. You need to tear meat. So I'm an advocate of meat. And therefore, it's hard. it gets hard when a vegetarian asks me for a dietary modification and plan. I can't do that because I advocate for meats. Okay. So if you have deficiency of vitamin B7, then just understand you'll have a very bad tongue. You will have a contact a dermatitis. Those people who have skin problems all the time and they think because you, you got in touch with somebody who has skin problems. Most of us get in touch with people who have skin problems and you never get those skin problems because you've weakened your system. And therefore, you predispose yourself to dermatitis. You'll have very brittle hair. And then you'll have alopecia. You start losing your hair. We don't want that in ladies, do we? No, we don't. Please, yeah, I feel like tagging someone, uh, some gym rats here. Please tag that gym rat here. They tell people you should eat a raw egg and a whole egg plus the shell and stuff. They do not understand the basics of biochemistry. They do not understand the basics of physiology and muscle anatomy. If your gym, gym's instructor doesn't understand muscle physiology, doesn't understand... Uh, uh, how the body works. The same same people will tell you, go and do a thousand sit-ups every day to get uh, a contours, the abs. Yet they don't understand the muscles that connect the abs, how they 
how they connect, that interrelation, how do you get them? You can get your abs by just doing squats and, dead, and deadlifts. It's enough to give you abs. Rather than doing sit-ups that basically you don't do them the right way, they hurt your spine. And then you come, you, you, you wonder, you've done six months of sit-ups and nothing is coming out. Shed fat before you start doing these things. Now, the most important one, vitamin C. At least we've done, no, before I even talk about vitamin C, that was vitamin B7. Let me talk about vitamin B9, which is folate, and then vitamin B12. Then we go to vitamin C. So vitamin B9 is called folate. Hey, this is why we have a problem. Last time we discussed about uh, uh, vitamin B9 and uh, anemia in pregnancy. Those who are on that live benefit rate from that. So vitamin B9, which is called folate, the natural form of vitamin B9 is folate. It is not folic acid, it's folate. Now, this folate in the system, it's converted to methyl folate. So methyl folate is the active compound of the folate. Pause and understand this. When you take tablets for folic acid, most of you, I know you know them by IFAS or FEFOL. If you take those tablets, first things first, they are synthetic and therefore they are non-absorbable and the body finds it difficult to assimilate them. That is one. So my pregnant women, if you are in this life, if you are taking those folic acid tablets and it's already beyond week, the first week, the first month of pregnancy, you're wasting time. Concentrate on diets. Because taking folic acid is intended to help you prevent neuronal tube defects or, or CNS effects in your baby. But the point is, the brain and the spinal cord in a baby this is basically embryology, anatomy of the embryo. It fuses within the first month, the first four weeks, to raise it fused. And therefore, if you take them after the first week, it's a waste of time. And most women take it during the 20th week of pregnancy. That's when you start being dished these tablets for folic acid. So they are not helping you, actually. Number two, for you to attain a certain serum concentration for folic acid, folic acid, not folate, folic acid in the system, you require six to eight weeks, which means you need to take this folic acid eight weeks before you start, before your conception. So if you're getting pregnant today, eight weeks back is when you, you should have started taking those folic acid for them to help your child get adequate uh, uh, benefits from them when you get pregnant, because it happens in the first four weeks. So you can imagine, then you're taking them at week 20 and the doctor is telling you, use this to prevent neural tube defects in your child. That doctor does not understand what he's saying. He did not sit in anatomy class to understand. He sat there to get a pass. So he is in business or she is in business. Suppose, so folic acid, the tablet, has to be converted to methyl folate, the active ingredient. And there is a hormone or, an, sorry, an enzyme that has to convert folic acid to methyl folate. However, the most interesting part is this enzyme is absent in 65% of women. Hello? This enzyme is absent in 65% of women. And therefore, most women cannot convert folic acid tablet into the active uh, ingredient, which is methyl folate. So again, it's a waste of time. That's the reason why you take them and you start experiencing all this constipation and gut issues because they are not absorbable and if they are absorbed, they cannot be converted to the active ingredient to help you get the benefits from it. So it's high time you start concentrating on dietary modifications and fasting instead of going to buy folic acid tablets. I hope that is understood. Therefore, let's go back. Folate, which is the vitamin B9, is converted to methyl folate. That is easy because it is a natural occurring product. So it's easy to convert to methyl folic. You don't need a lot of energy. You don't need a lot of enzymes. You convert it to methyl folate. Then this methyl folate will now help you in synthesis of DNA, synthesis of red blood cells, synthesis of... So basically, it will play a very important, even nerves in the brain. So what you need is you need to eat the liver, you need to eat those eggs plus the yolks, you need to eat green leafy vegetables, you need to consume cruciferous vegetables, you need to consume fermented cabbage, the sauerkraut. This is where you'll get your vitamin B9 in its natural form, the spinach, the beetroots, these are foods that are rich in vitamin B9. So the liver, the eggs, the green leafy vegetables, and the cruciferous vegetables, and the fermented cabbage. Perfect source of vitamin B9. I'm talking about this deeper because I know what brings problems here. Those people who have anemia, 
this is your chance chance to shine those people who are pregnant this is your chance to shine a pregnant woman can survive a whole pregnancy without having to go to the hospital and take any single pill okay so i hope vitamin b9 has sunk in moving swiftly to the last b vitamin which is vitamin b12 So vitamin B12 is what we call cobalamin. Some of you call it cyanocobalamin, but that means it's bound on cyanide. So the active form of vitamin B12 is cobalamin. Why is it called cobalamin? Because it is bound to a mineral called cobalt. You see now where minerals are very important. When you consume vitamins, you need magnesium, you need zinc, you need cobalt, you need selenium. And now you understand how the relationship comes in because these vitamins are also coenzymes, so they activate enzymes. So for them to activate enzymes, they need to bind to minerals. And this one is one of them. Cobalamin is a vitamin B12, but bound to cobalt. And therefore, if you don't consume foods that are rich in cobalt, you will have serious problem. So it is from the name that you get the reasons why it is supposed to be taken with cobalt. Okay. So understand this, that if you have problems, actually vitamin B12 is absorbed in your small intestines, the terminal part of the small intestines. So it goes all the way to the terminal part of the small intestines. However, listen to this keenly. If you have done a gastric bypass surgery, you have, you have actually disconnected the small intestine and then joined it back to the upper part of the, the smaller part of the stomach. That tells you absorption of vitamin b12 in people who have done gastric bypass surgeries is a serious problem if you've ever done a gastric bypass and you you are regretting it yes you should regret it because it was a shortcut and it's a waste of your money and your time so i want you to know this do not ever reverse a biological function the best way to lose weight is through the kitchen there is no surgery that will change your situation liposuction gastric bypass i, I don't know gastric balloon all these things come with harmful effects. They will not help you at all. They rather demonetize what I'm saying, but get it clean. They will not help you because once you disconnect that, uh, that, that, that tube, that small intestine, and then join it back, remember you're making a small portion of the stomach to help you reduce the amount of food that you're eating. That is a problem number one, because if you reduce the amount of food that you're eating, the amount of nutrients that you're supposed to get from healthy foods are also reduced. Number two, you're reducing the amount of HCL, and HCL is supposed to tear down protein prevent you from getting conditions or diseases that are coming with food and also tighten that sphincter so that you don't have the reflux disease so if you reduce the amount of stomach acid you're bringing yourself so many problems and this is the reason why they come back with the uh, gut the reflux disease this is the reason why they they have all infections all the time because the hcl is messed up this is the reason why they will eat small amounts of food and then go into nutrient deficiencies and that's why they come with vitamin b12 deficiency if you've ever seen a gastric bypass person, bypass person a person who has done it, you will you will pity them because when they fold their tongue, when they when they do that, their tongue is all, almost tearing apart because of vitamin B12 and B6 deficiency. They have anemia because vitamin B9, uh, vitamin B6, vitamin B9, and vitamin uh, B12. They play a very important role in iron absorption and form, formation of red blood cells. Okay. This basically tells you that anemia will be very possible if you have vitamin B12 deficiency. If you have uh, vitamin B12 deficiency, the next thing that you'll get into is basically DNA synthesis, problems with DNA synthesis. Therefore, you will not have proteins. Protein synthesis is compromised. Therefore, you have muscle weaknesses. You will have confusion and brain damage. You will have nerve damage and that tingling effect, what we call peripheral neuropathy. Okay, so very prone people uh, and people who are diabetic and people who are using metformin also. And then you'll have brain issues, so memory loss, dementia, and all these issues. So vitamin B12 is very important. Out of all these vitamins, B12, B9, and B6, they are superb. You cannot lose lack on, you cannot miss out on these B vitamins. But the B vitamins are very present in most foods. So they are very present, like vitamin B12, fish, fermented milk without sugar, meats, the fatty meats, the eggs. And if you realized all these vitamins, we are just mentioning the same sources. Hello? We are mentioning the same sources.
It is so annoying when the, when a lady comes in, done a gastric bypass, eight months down the line, they have not they have lost about five kgs out of their 120, and it has become permanent. It's constant, and they are always on vitamin B12, uh, B complex injections because they want to reverse the side effects. They are always going for meprazoles and the antacids. They are always coming with infections of the stomach, the typhoids, the brucellosis, the cholera, because they cannot handle it. They cannot control it. And then what they, the only thing that they were told is you will lose weight. So they went for the losing weight and forgot about every other thing because your doctor is not interested in you getting better. Your doctor is interested in you depositing that check and you draining that insurance. You do not go for any type of bariatric surgery to lose your weight. Thank you so much, SF254, for your super chat on YouTube. I appreciate that, SC254. Thank you so much. So don't go for shortcuts in weight loss. Weight loss is lost through fixing the kitchen. There are only there are several hormones that can be involved in weight loss, but you can lose the two, the major two, the estrogen and the insulin. Once you lose these two, you're already on your way of losing weight. And how do you lose these two? Healthy keto, no carbohydrates completely. Change your cooking oil to saturated animal fats. That is the best way to do these things. And then drop all the processed foods. You will lose weight. Drop the fruits. We have sung this here every other time. Please do not do those surgeries. Even if you have money, now you're in a coma, please send that money to us as a super chat. Why would you use 100,000 shillings to lose 5 kgs? When I can help you budget that 100,000 for the next two years and lose all the kgs that you want to lose. Please do not suffer when we are here. We, we exist because of a reason. Do not suffer when we can really help. And some of you, you think that me asking 1,500 from you is so expensive. But you people, you can still go and use a lot of money to buy kits. A kit is 3,000 shillings for H. pylori. Gastric bypass is almost 150,000. You can use that money to do all these things, but you cannot send 1,500 shillings for us to help you get the information that you want. And even though you can't send that, you can't take time to go into our YouTube channel or our Telegram channel to just read and understand all these healthcare conditions. They are there. It's a mini pharmacy and everything is provided there. Why don't you just take a bold step to go to my Facebook, my YouTube channel, and my Telegram channel and read. Just search what you want to. You will lose weight through that. And people are losing weight through these things. This, this is a lifetime investment that you're doing to yourself. And I'm giving you for free. Don't be mean. Don't be mean. Don't be mean. information information It is free. If you need information from me, then you'll have to pay 1500 because of my time. Okay, so just make good use of this. Don't always be that person when you want to criticize everything because criticism is not bad. We appreciate criticism, but criticism has no creativity. There's no creativity in criticizing anything. You don't need to, you don't need any creativity to criticize something. You just need to say, ah, this is wrong. Oh, this is not okay. So there is no creativity in critics. Just sitting there and typing that bad vibe. No creativity at all. So instead of sitting and wasting time typing, Please use that time to use that internet to just go on the and search for information. Just compare different information, then we can easily have a conversation around that. I appreciate it when you tell me, Dr. How about this? How about this way? Through that, I don't create a defensive mechanism against you. I open up, we learn from each other. Once we do that, then it becomes easier for us. Now, don't create the environment that has been created in hospitals where pharmacists are hating nurses, nurses are hating MOs, MOs are hating screen call officers, everybody's hating each other, and we are there to exist for one reason. Ke Ke Kelly, thank you so much for $10. Thank you so much, Ke Kelly, as a super chat on YouTube. I appreciate you. So don't create that environment where doctors are hating on each other. A Nemo cannot listen to a pharmacist, yet they are a team. Why did you become a team if you can't listen to each other? That a nurse is always hating uh, an emo and thinking that she is or he is the one who is doing a lot in the healthcare system. So it's always about who is doing a lot, who is earning more, who is who is dating who, and we forget the main goal, which is the patient. We are supposed to work as a team. If you're a pharmacist, you're supposed to consult an emo on something. If you're an emo, you're supposed to tell the pharmacist, hey, how do I go about this? When you're on a old round, everybody wants to be told smart the other. Why do you want to outsmart the other in front of a patient? Why don't you just discuss and then make a conclusive uh, uh, diagnosis or a conclusive uh, therapy for one patient? 
You walk into a hospital in a ward, going to do a ward round. Thank you, Flores. Going to do a ward round, and what you see is doctors arguing on a table on, 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 in front of a patient. Everybody wants to feel right. This one wants to increase the insulin dose. The other one wants to change the diets. And patients feel that uh, animal fats are, uh, are harmful. And then now you want to rub it into everybody. Mm -hmm. Then you come out with, you know, Mimido Daktar, eh? you are a nutritionist, you're supposed to listen to me. Now, come on, nobody's supposed to listen to you until you give us a point and you defend your point. How many of you have patients in the world who are suffering from diabetes and all the doctor does is to increase the insulin dose and nobody talks about uh, the nutrition part? You read into a nutritional part. If you've been here for long, you already understand the basics. So you go to your, 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 your relative's ward and then you read the nutritional uh, file the, the new notes for a nutritionist, and you start wondering, why is this happening? You even have more information about nutrition than, than a nutritionist who wrote those nutritional notes. So all they write is just moderation, 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 moderation. Then you wonder, did they actually sit in class for all those four years to just read moderation? Please start questioning these people and be very vigilant. Otherwise, we are doing just fine. We are cruising nicely. So let's get moving. So for this vitamin B12, vegans also suffer a lot on this. So most vegans come with vitamin B12 deficiencies. I'm not saying all vegans suffer. I don't think, I, I, I'm not saying that vegans suffer mostly uh, vitamin B12 deficiencies. I'm just saying that vegans, most vegans have high tendency of getting to vitamin B12 deficiency because they don't eat meat, they don't eat fish, they don't eat uh, chicken, they don't eat uh, the eggs. And these are the rich sources of vitamin B12. Therefore, if you ask those people who have this condition and you realize they are vegans then it's high time you start noticing that because now a vegan will have to go to an injection of vitamin b12 so why would you prefer an injection over the eggs okay so always prioritize diets there is no condition that the diets cannot fix always prioritize diets after that let medicines be an emergency let surgery be the last option in treatment you have not tried diets to lose weight but you are running for gastric bypass why why you just want to eat your chapati look at your wheels raburu went for, for for the is it was it bypass or the balloon and then he came out saying he, he, he reduced eight chapatis eating eight chapatis to eating now five chapatis doing the same things so that tells you how empty the doctors most of the doctors are that a doctor can do a gastric bypass to you but tell you to keep eating the same same foods why is he saying that? Because he wants you back. So the gentleman has never lost weight ever since. Just lost a few kgs, then then <laughs> got even worse. So we can't go that route. We need to fix diets. And I'm glad that most uh, nutritionists who are here are already getting the message. Okay. So if you have vitamin b12 deficiency or if you're diagnosed with vitamin b12 deficiency i want you to understand these are the conditions that you might be suffering from and these are the conditions that cause most of the vitamin deficiencies number one is either you are eating foods that are uh, are not rich in these vitamins what are these foods the wheat products the seed oils the inflammatory foods that we mentioned all the time the sugars number two you're not eating green leafy vegetables you're not eating meats you're a vegan mess maybe and you're not eating these uh, protein fatty proteins Number three, you have gastric ulcers, and we already talked about uh, the ulcers and how to fix it. So if you have ulcers, you'll have vitamin and mineral deficiencies because you cannot absorb them adequately. Number three, those people who have pancreatitis, you realize this, the pancreatitis and hepatitis, liver problems and, 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 uh, and the pancreatic problems, you realize that pancreatic juice and the bile juice are very necessary in absorption of vitamin, uh, the fat-soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and K. So you need those two organs functioning properly for you to absorb A, D, E, and K. And then eat a diet that is rich in those vitamins. And then if you have prolonged antibiotic use, remember in your gut, we have the gut microbiota. There are microorganisms in your gut that help you basically uh, to digest food and absorb these nutrients. So if you are on prolonged use of antibiotics, those people who take, uh, they call it augmentin. You want to take augmentin every time you feel a stomach ache. You think this is typhoid. He need typhoid yangui. My typhoid comes like this. Okay. I understand. If I just get a diarrhea, this is typhoid. This is brucella. This is brucella. And you are on 21 days injection of streptomycin. You are on gentamicin injection. You are on uh, vancomycin injections for chronic conditions. 
you are on uh, uh, those anti-acid drugs, the kids that have amoxicillin, you are taking augmentin over the counter all the time. This is a problem because you're, you're actually predisposing yourself to killing this good bacteria in your gut and therefore you'll have a vitamin deficiencies. So those people who are on prolonged antibiotic use, you're killing good bacteria and that's a problem. People who are on metformin, drugs for diabetes. Yeah, people are owning diseases. Yes, actually I wonder why people say, e alsas yangu itamka. Why do you own a disease? Najua typhoid yangu inafunga hivyo. Daktari aliniambia, e brucellosis yangu ni shindano tu itatibu. Niliambua hii typhoid yangu ikianza, the last time nilimeza augmentin nikapona. So saa hizi, nispomeza augmentin, haitapona. Nimejaribu kumeza cipro iponi, lakini kimeza augmentin, niko sawa kabisa. And as a side note, women who are using contraceptives, specifically the tablets, if you're using antibiotics and using uh, them in combination, specifically the amoxicillins, this augment in Zen, and you're using uh, hormonal contraceptives, the tablet one, the pills, you'll end up getting pregnant. So do not ever own a disease. My typhoid, my typhoid, my ulcers, if I don't take a kit, I cannot heal. My ulcers are very painful. My typhoid is very chronic. My brucellosis comes every time I drink milk. And yesterday I drank milk. I remember. This is why I have these joint pains. So I have to take a 21-day uh, streptomycin injection. Please, don't own a disease. Nobody was designed to be sick. Nobody was designed to be on antibiotics. These drugs, yes, they do help. But it's supposed to be an emergency and that last therapy. So you tell me, if you have your immune, immunity boosted through fasting and eating healthy keto, which disease can you handle? If you have your gut fixed through fasting and also taking salt and eating healthy keto, so you have a concentrated HCL, which disease can go through that HCL? Which disease? Typhoid? It can't. Brucellosis cannot. Cholera cannot. H. pylori cannot. Ulcers cannot. So if you have your primary immunity fixed, the gut, and then you have a strong immunity through vitamin D, through healthy keto and saturated fats and cholesterol, which disease will you suffer from? You tell me. Why would you need drugs? There's no condition whatsoever that can never be handled by boosting immunity through diets and fasting. None. Okay. So if you have a liver problem, Crohn's disease, you have an, a chronic antibiotic use, you are on metformin and drugs for ulcer, uh, uh, the ulcer drugs, you, are, uh, you have a pancreas problem, you have had a gastrectomy, so your stomach has either been chopped off or your intestines have been chopped off, you have ulcers, you have uh, bad diets, you will suffer from vitamin deficiencies. So that is exactly what you need to do. You need to fix those conditions for you to start absorbing nutrients and uh, these vitamins in the adequate amounts. So we pause there. We take about uh, one minute and then we continue with the fat soluble vitamins. This has been very deep. We are about 53 minutes of just talking about the B vitamins and the vitamin C. So take a chance on yourself. Those people who are on TikTok, you can like our life and keep moving. Don't be mean. Those people who are interested in sending us a super chat, we're also interested in sending uh, you information through that. So let's, meanwhile, let's pin our contacts here. Also, if you are outside the country, Kenya, that is, and you want to send us PayPal, kindly do it through our PayPal account, which is mochila89 at gmail.com. And uh, most interestingly, uh, on TikTok, we had a guy called uh, Batman, the guy who was talking in an accent and told us uh, his testimony and then promised to send us $100 through PayPal. The gentleman uh, is an honest gentleman. He did what he had to do, and we appreciate him. I actually had a conversation with him today, and he's doing just pretty well. So thank you so much, Batman, if I told you are on this live. Just pin my paper here on YouTube. If you're on TikTok and you're outside the country, my PayPal account is muchile89 at gmail.com. Watu wa melebua, ni mishwa mwezi watu mafanyo ile kitu. 
Tuna mpigwa kitu cha mwezi bana you've been paid at the end of the month why don't you be generous you can be generous stand pin that on tiktok too you can also experiment with your paper maybe you have a paper you've never used it so you, you, <laughs> you can experiment uh, through that uh, contact and then we shall see what happens if it comes to me I'll call you and tell you hey hey your experiment was successful <laughs> I can't find your telegram my telegram is health and wellness port just search health and wellness port on telegram you'll find my telegram so pin my pen pal I've also pinned my contact and uh, yeah so let's continue we have had a good break that was a commercial break we hope youtube has put advertisements there so that <laughs> By the way, very soon we'll, we'll do it like a radio or a, an owner radio. So we shall get better with time. Okay? Better with time. So if you send your chat, super chat, I'll, I'll be able to mention you here. Anyway, let's continue. So those who are the B vitamins and the water soluble vitamins. So remember we said as an uh, as a nutshell, we have fat soluble and water soluble. The water soluble are basically we, all these vitamins we get them from diets, but the water soluble are soluble in water and therefore they can easily be excreted through the kidneys and therefore deficiency conditions are very prone because they get easily excreted from the body but toxicity is very minimal because they're not reserved in the body but the fat soluble the deficiency conditions are not very prone but the toxicity is high because they are stored in the body because of fat okay so fat soluble vitamins you cannot absorb them without eating them or making them uh, ready for absorption through saturated fats the ghee the tallow the lard the sweat the coconut oil, the butter, the cheese, those are the fats that you're supposed to cook with to make sure that your fat soluble vitamins are available for absorption in the small intestines. And those people who tell me that eating animal fats, they will clog your arteries, you are being ignorant and uh, misinformed because fat is not absorbed directly into the blood vessels. Fat is absorbed into the lymphatic system. And again, bile, bile juice does a very important role in uh, metabolism of fat. So it breaks down fat into very small uh, portions. So the way fat solidifies on your plate does not mean it is solidified in the stomach because in the stomach we have HCL, in the small intestines we have bicarbonates and bile. And this bile will break it down into very absorbable uh, reds. Now, if you're here, let me take this opportunity before I continue to advertise this, that tomorrow we are doing our testimonial Tuesday, our first of a kind. Thank you, Bilo. Testimonial Tuesday. What does that mean? That means we are going to do a live to basically uh, just talk about your testimonies. Now, how is this? Another super chat from uh, Linda Okwata. Linda Okwata, we found your super chat. Thank you so much, Linda Okwata, for sharing your salary with us. <laughs> we appreciate you so much. Thank you so much, Linda. Now, so tomorrow we are doing another live at the same time, 8 p.m. Uh, on Wednesday, we're doing the, another live and then we'll take a small break because of uh, the schedule that is coming ahead of us. So people in, uh, possibly if you are in Kuala, we might, we might end up interacting uh, in the course of the next month. So kindly uh, invite us in Kuala. Let's do something. Uh, People around Mombasa in Nairobi, I don't know if we'll be able to do that, but we can be able to see you again. So don't worry, yeah, we'll communicate. But we will be doing a whole lap, so we'll have some pause on the lives, but again, we'll resume possibly in December. But we can do a TikTok live anytime we, we are here. So thank you so much for being part of this conversation. And thank you so much for most of you who are referring people to us, those of you who are spreading our information, sharing our videos, commenting asking those questions i am sure i have answered your question at some point sometimes on telegram on, on youtube it becomes i know on tiktok it becomes overwhelming but on youtube and telegram i answer those questions when i get the time so do not shy off from doing that i will be able to make something happen so yeah so tomorrow we are doing a testimonial tuesday as they do their theories tuesday we are doing testimonial tuesday Come with your testimony, share it with us, let people learn from your experience, let us interact with you, let's correct you where you're going wrong. That will make sense for everyone tomorrow. So tomorrow we're having two hours of testimonies only, no more talking, just you interacting with us on a personal level. You ask for it 
And who are we? We gave it to you. On Thursday, on Wednesday, we are doing another live, the same, same time. So be part of that generation. We are going to change lives. And thank you so much for uh, hitting the 17,000 subscribers on YouTube. We need to get to 100,000, inshallah. That will happen. And we appreciate you for doing that for us. Thank you for 112,000 on TikTok. Thank you for 2,700 on Telegram. And thank you for 4,000 on Twitter or X. We are going. And by the way, don't miss on the X spaces that happen on Saturday at 8 p.m. They are very interactive. Those who were there uh, last Saturday, they got so informed. It was very interactive. We actually ended it because time had just run, uh, just run out. But it was so awesome. And people learned a lot about fasting. So let's continue. Now, we are done with the water-soluble vitamins. We are headed to the fat-soluble vitamins. This is where the challenge comes in. Fat-soluble vitamins, you cannot absorb them without consuming a, a fatty-rich diet. When I tell you to eat meat that is fatty, I'm actually telling you, one, you will kill your cravings for hunger because fat is satiety food. Number two, you will reduce the amount of protein that you eat, which basically can be converted back to glucose through gluconeogenesis. And number three, you'll be able to absorb fat-soluble vitamins in their optimum amounts. That is vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, and vitamin K. For, for students, either DECA for your mnemonic, for your remembrance, or a DEC. DECA or a DEC. That is fat-soluble vitamins. Now, before even you start absorbing these fat-soluble vitamins, you must understand that there are three organs that are involved in absorption of fat-soluble vitamins. Number one organ that has to be super functional, which means it has to lose the fat that is in, inside it, is the liver. So if you have a fatty liver, whether alcoholic or non-alcoholic, you will have a problem with production of bile. And the work of bile is, it is supposed to be synthesized or to help you uh, sequester fats, break down those larger molecules of fat into smaller molecules for easy absorption. Those people who have done a gallbladder surgery and you have your gallbladder removed, because of any cause, infection or a blockade, you really, uh, we are really sorry about that. You went the wrong route. It is hard to recover, but understand that the liver is still present. So gallbladder only stores bile, it doesn't synthesize bile. So you can take synthetic bile salts. They are available in the markets. You can take them for you to absorb this fat because you now have a problem in digesting and absorbing fat, which means you're going to vitamin ADECA or DEC or a, a DEC or DECA deficiency. So if you have a gallbladder removed, you're already starting this game at one nil down. That means you'll go for supplements. But if your gallbladder has not been remo removed and you're aiming to go to get a gallbladder removed, don't. Simply start fasting. The liver will form bile salts that will dissolve every stone in your gallbladder and that tube will open up. The cysting duct will open up and then bile will start flowing. Don't go for the surgery. Do not. Start by healthy keto and fasting. Your liver will do its work. Okay? Understand that the liver will do its work. So, the liver synthesizes bile, bile juice, basically, through the bile salts and other things, and makes this bile juice, and then stores it in the gallbladder. And then when your fat-rich diet reaches the small intestine, there is a hormone called cholecystokinin, CCK, that is produced in the intestinal wall and is transported all the way to the gallbladder. And its function is to cause a contraction in the gallbladder so that it ejects the bile juice to come in through the bile duct and then con combine with the pancreatic juice and get into the sphincter of Odi, that is anatomy, into the small intestine, the, the duodenum. And then at this point, it starts digesting fat for you to absorb it easily. So you need the functional liver. That is one. Number two, you need a functional pancreas. So if you're an alcoholic, you're already two nil down. No liver, no pancreas. If you're on chronic use of antibiotics, no liver, no pancreas. If you consume seed oils, wheat products, and sugar, no liver, no pancreas. If you're on diabetes drugs, no liver, no pancreas. So therefore, you already have started your game <laughs> on the wrong side or on the wrong footage. So you must have a functional liver, you must have a functional pancreas, and above all, you must have a functional intestine so that you absorb it. So if you have SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, problems. If you have the Crohn's disease, problem. The inflammatory bowel disease, problem. If you have constipation, chronic constipation, problem. If you have ulcers and the duodenal ulcers, problem. 
And all these things can be fixed by fasting and dietary modifications. That tells you that is everything. Fasting is everything. These are secret medic medications that uh, the hospitals will never tell you. Okay? So if you have those three, because if you lack these three, then you will not produce bile, you will not produce pancreatic juice, and you will not absorb them through, through the intestines. Okay? So you want it. You want it. You want you want all these three organs to be good. They are there for a reason. So you want them to combine, to get pancreatic juice and the bile juice to combine, and then come into the intestines, digest fat, and then you absorb it through a healthy intestine. Okay? Yes, so that is it. So vitamin A, D, E, and K. Vitamin K plays a very important role in bleeding, prevents you from bleeding if at all you have a wound. That's why the drug called warfarin, the drug that is supposed to help people to thin blood and also to break down uh, clotting in the system, which is called warfarin, a very dangerous drug. It's a drug that blocks uh, the action of vitamin K and therefore you start having blood thinning. So vitamin K is actually the antidote to this warfarin. So if you have an overdose of warfarin, they give you vitamin K injection. So it prevents you from bleeding to death. Number two, vitamin E, an, an antioxidant, plays a role in nervous function, plays a role in blood synthesis, plays a role in the spine. So if you have vitamin E deficiency, there will be a buildup of toxin, the reactive oxygen species in the system. They will build up. For those people who smoke cigarettes, if you smoke cigarettes, cigarette smoke has a high potential of this uh, reactive oxygen species, which basically kill your cells, kill your mitochondria, and kill your system in general. So it causes inflammation. So most people who smoke cigarettes have deficiency of vitamin E and vitamin C. On this point, remember this. You cannot activate vitamin E, even if it's a fat-soluble vitamin. The activation of vitamin E is through vitamin C. <laughs> hey, understand that. If you're taking vitamin E supplements and you don't have vitamin C, it's a waste of time. If you're smoking cigarettes, and you're still taking vitamin E, deficiency of vitamin E will be very prone because these cigarettes, the smoke or the nicotine, basically cleans out the vitamin E through detoxification. Once you clean it, you, do, you go into deficiency of vitamin E. Now, if you take supplements of vitamin E and you don't take vitamin C as natural form, the soy crot, the vegetables, uh, the, the liver, if you don't take that, or the citrus fruits, the lemon plus the pill, if you don't take that, you will end up getting problems. So you cannot activate vitamin E if you don't have <laughs> vitamin C. That's the reason why those people who have scurvy, the vitamin C deficiency, also have problems in the liver and their kidneys and their system in general because they cannot detoxify harmful chemicals through vitamin E. They also have nerve problems. They also have memory loss. They also have anemia because vitamin E can, or can only be activated when you have vitamin C present in the system. Then vitamin A. Vitamin A is synthesized and then stored in the liver, but it's very toxic on the extreme. So it's supposed to help you uh, clear night blindness so you start having good vision, uh, fight uh, viruses in the body, okay? And then also memory functions and immunity boosting. But excess of vitamin A will bring you problems because vitamin A can actually, in pregnant women, if you use vitamin A in excess, you'll get an abortion. So vitamin A can has... Uh, issues with the baby. It can clear out your child very fast. And also, vitamin A is teratogenic, meaning it affects the growing embryo. Okay? So you have this problem. So vitamin A, nzuri kwa kuona, good for vision, but bad for the growing baby, bad for pregnant women in extremes. The good thing is the liver does its job by limiting the amount of vitamin A. So if you have a fatty liver, of course, you already know what you're getting into. Then the best one is vitamin D, which basically plays a role in bone function, plays a role in immunity. And then vitamin D has to come from cholesterol. On your skin, you already have that cholesterol. So vitamin D does not come from the sun. The sun gives you UV. UV activates the inactive cholesterol, which is ego calciferol, that is vitamin D2, and cholecalciferol, vitamin D3 on your skin. Once it hits your skin, you activate that cholesterol. And then this cholesterol is carried all the way to the liver for more activation. And then from the liver all the way to the kidneys for even further activation. Therefore, you cannot have vitamin D if you have a fatty liver and if you have a problem with the kidneys. And what causes a fatty liver? Sugar and carbohydrates. What causes a kidney problem? Sugar and carbohydrates. 
Therefore, for you to have maximum vitamin D, you have to drop sugar, seed oils, and wheat products. Now I think you understand when I talk about wheat, sugar, and seed oils. Now you understand where I come from, because I, I know the role that they play, play in inhibiting uh, all these healthy nutrients and the role that they play in all these conditions that you are suffering from. Okay, so that is vitamin D. And vitamin D, uh, deficiency in adults, you get osteomalacia. Deficiency in children, you get the rickets. No adult gets rickets. Have you seen an adult getting into rickets? You can't get rickets when you're an adult. So is it okay to take vitamin A? Yes, if you're in deficiency state, but vitamin A is available in foods. So it's okay to take foods that are rich in vitamin A because that, it is easy for the liver to detoxify it. So let's start breaking it down slow by slow, like vitamin K. We already said that vitamin K inhibits your blood, as your blood helps in blood clotting, so it inhibits you from bleeding to death. Okay? So, yes, sugar is, sugar is poison to humans, but you see there are people who are telling you that sugar, even your DNA has sugar, and therefore the human body is adapted to sugar, but no, glucose and fructose are not the same as ribose. DNA has ribose. <laughs> glucose and fructose and, and ribose are not the same. So somebody who tells you there is sugar in your DNA and therefore sugar is okay is a liar, is a misinformed individual. Ribose does not come from glucose. Ribose does not come from fructose. Fructose gives you fats. Glucose gives you fats. Glucose can give you energy, but if you're active, if you're not active like most of us and most of us who consume carbohydrates on a daily basis, you're just storing that glucose in form of fat. So there's no way it will be turned into ribose to give you DNA. So it's not, it's not making sense. So sugar is one thing that is supposed to kill you. And you know, if, you, if you're keen, you realize, uh, if you have high sugar in your system, then the body has to bring it down through insulin. Why is it bringing it down? If at all sugar is important, why, don't, why doesn't the body just let it uh, go overboard? If at all it's giving you the energy that you want, why doesn't the body control it? Because it's harmful. So vitamin K also plays a role in bone calcification, which means if you want heavy bones, you need vitamin K. And that's why when you're taking those supplements for joint, for the bones, those calcium and magnesium supplements for the joints that are non-absorbable, that cause you constipation, if you're taking those supplements, you need an injection of vitamin K2. Because vitamin K2 is the one that gets this calcium from blood vessels, because calcium can cause calcification of blood vessels and hardening. So vitamin K2 actually sends this calcium from the from the uh, blood vessels, sends it all the way to the bones. So it's the role of vitamin K2 specifically to send calcium from the from the blood vessels to where it belongs, which is in the bones. And where do you get vitamin K2? It's injectable and it's also in fermented cabbage. So if you if you give your grandfathers, your your old babas, you're giving them the the bone supplements. I've actually made a video on. Uh, those calcium supplements is a waste of your time. You'd rather give them bone broth or the eggs because they are non-absorbable. Those tablets are non-absorbable and they're very expensive. And you take every day a tablet for calcium for 30 days, but nothing happens. The glucosamine sulfate and the chondroitin sulfate, they are not absorbable. They are synthetic. That's why those old babas come back with constipation. So for you to get benefits from calcium, you need to get vitamin K2 or get K2 from fermented cabbage. That's how you do it. Okay, so now vitamin K can cause calcification of the arteries also. So it can cause this calcium coming into the blood. That's a bad one. Okay, so in soft tissues and in blood vessels, you can get calcification. So for you to take this calcification, all this calcium all back to the bones, you need vitamin K2. So you cannot just take vitamin K as an injection or from the diet and hope to get uh, benefits from it. You need to take specific K, vitamin K, which is vitamin K2, and that's the most important one. Now, if you have deficiency of vitamin K, you will have problems with bleeding. And I already told you, for those people who, are, who have thrombosis, who have clotting in blood vessels, they require a drug that is called warfarin or heparin. Now, warfarin is a drug that inhibits uh, coagulation process so it inhibits the action of vitamin k okay so this is the problem so if you have deficiency of vitamin k then you have effects of warfarin which means you'll start bleeding and you'll bleed to death and your blood will be very thin also you'll have problems with the absorption of vitamin b12 
So vitamin K plays a very important role in absorption of vitamin B12. Okay. Good. Now the next one is vitamin E, an antioxidant, potent antioxidant, tocopherols, tocophenols. These are active antioxidants in the system. In the body, you need vitamin E for you to detoxify every issue in your body. D3 plus K2 can combine. Yes, they combine nowadays D3 and K2. But the problem is they are synthetic. You can get the natural forms in the diet which are easy to assimilate and digest and convert to healthy uh, nutrients. But these synthetic tablets are non-absorbable. So avoid the tablets. Good. So vitamin E, a potent antioxidant in the system, helps in production of uh, cells that make the muscle. So it's for muscle strength. A production of red blood cells, so uh, blood function, retina. So most of you just know that carrots are supposed to help you in vision because of vitamin A. How about vitamin E? Vitamin E also plays a role in vision. Then nerve function. Okay? So if you have deficiency in vitamin E, hemolysis, which means anemia, muscle wasting, neuropathy, peripheral neuropathy for that matter, and then retinopathy, problems with the eye. And above all, Toxins in the body, specifically reactive oxygen species, will start raising up. This is exposing you to cancer. This is exposing you to systemic inflammation. And this is the problem in the future, the diabetes, hypertension, and all this metabolic syndrome. But you cannot have vitamin E as active in the system without what? Hello? Let me pose a question to you. How do we activate vitamin E? I'm hoping for the answers before you continue. How do we activate vitamin E in the system? Even though we are eating a diet that is rich in vitamin E and we are eating all these fats and vitamin E is being absorbed, how do you now convert vitamin E to its active form? How? Because the mistakes will not come in you eating vitamin E. The mistake will come in you eating vitamin E on its own. So how do you convert? vitamin uh, E to its active form so that you detoxify the system through those those cigarette smoke that you've been smoking, they get out of the system. This sugar that you've been eating, excess of it gets out of the system. All the issues, all the toxin that you've accumulated gets out of the system. How do you activate vitamin E? That is my question. So if you want to benefit from red blood cell synthesis, so no anemia, you want muscle action. Those people go to the gym and you tear your muscles and you come back. You want to be strong. And then you want nerve function. You want the active prostate function. You want active retina. How do you stabilize vitamin E? How do you activate vitamin E? You activate vitamin E through vitamin C. Thank you so much for those who are answering that question. That tells me my students are a lot. So you cannot activate vitamin E without activating, without eating vitamin C which tells you somebody who has eaten green leafy vegetables and then consumed a lemon has perfect combination. But somebody who has just eaten uh, pumpkin seeds and has a, an enlarged prostate and is hoping, now I've eaten pumpkin seeds, now my prostate will start shrinking. Uh -huh. It will not shrink. You have to take that vitamin E through pumpkin seeds and then consume vitamin C-rich diet, which tells you you have to stop eating sugar. Because if you take sugar and vitamin C, Let's say you take an orange. The body will not prefer vitamin C. It will discard vitamin C. It will only give. It will only take the fructose and the glucose because it gives it a reward. So now, yes, you've eaten the pumpkin seeds. You, they are rich in magnesium and they're rich in vitamin and vitamin E and zinc. But are they going, going to help you? So your vitamin E has to be activated by vitamin C. Therefore, they go hand in hand. If you're taking vitamin E supplements and there is no vitamin C in your diet, you have a problem. Okay? So yeah, I'm glad that there are people who are already getting what I'm saying here. As you continue asking, as you continue getting confused, SM, people are getting it. And it's very rare for example, to get confused on my platform. It's very rare. There's something I wanted to point out about uh, iron absorption. Iron absorption happens in the stomach. Yeah, there's something I need to point out about iron absorption and vitamin C. Now, in your blood, if you want to get a boost in blood, so people who take the folic acid tablets, people who maybe eat the liver and all the time, and you want an increase or a boost in your blood levels, 
specifically pregnant women and those who have anemia, eating a liver alone also is a problem because you can eat the liver or you can eat those foods that are rich in iron and then you absorb that iron. But remember, the iron that you're absorbing is ferric. The iron that is rich in blood is ferric, which is Fe3+. That is ferric. And you need to convert these ferric ions, you reduce them to ferrous ions, which is Fe2+. That is a role of vitamin C. Hello? Are we getting how important vitamin C is? So vitamin C, not only will it help you synthesize red blood cells that will help you recover from anemia, by activating or reducing fer ferric to ferrous, which is ion 3 to ion 2, which is the active one, but it will also help you detoxify the system by activating vitamin E. So it is no, there is no way you can avoid vitamin C. Vitamin C will play a role in bleeding. Vitamin C will play a role in recovery from dental issues. Vitamin C will play a role in immunity. Vitamin C will play a role in activation of vitamin E, therefore detoxification and uh, antioxidant activity. Vitamin E will help you with synthesis red blood cells and, 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 the, and the hemoglobin. Therefore, you need vitamin C in literally all the functions in the body. And where do you get vitamin C? Another question for my, my audience. Why are fruits the worst source of vitamin C? For those of you who are thinking that the lemon will play an important role in vitamin C, why is an orange, not lemon, the orange, why is an orange a worst source of vitamin C? High question. Liz Okongo, thank you so much. For you to reduce the ferric to ferrous, you need vitamin C. So why is the lemon, or not the lemon, why am I telling them, say they're talking about the lemon all the time? Why is the orange or fruits a very poor source of vitamin C? We want to move together. Pole pole pamoja, pole pole lakini pamoja. Pepper, ball pepper, and bell pepper, and, uh, and cayenne pepper, all these are very rich sources of uh, vitamin C. The lemon peel is rich source of vitamin C. But my YouTube people, thank you so much for people who are on, tele, on, on, on TikTok. This is a very alert audience. Yes. Safi, because the body loves sugar as a reward. It prefers sugar to vitamin C. Perfect. Now I can even go to rest now, knowing that most of the people who are on this live have already understood my point. So, if you ever Google the structure of vitamin C and then the structure of glucose or fructose, you will realize there's so much similarities. There's a very a small change in the structures. So, they look alike. But the body doesn't like vitamin C because vitamin C does not give it the feel good. It doesn't give it dopamine. So, the body prefers what gives it a quick fix and what gives it a reward of feeling good. That means... The body will take the sugar, which is fructose and glucose, and discard vitamin C. Therefore, fruits are not the adequate or the healthy sources of vitamin C. If you want vitamin C, number one on the list, fermented cabbage. All types of peppers. Green leafy vegetables. The lemon peels. Those are the richest sources of vitamin C. Enjoy them and do not overcook them because higher temperatures... Vitamin C is thermolabile, which means higher temperatures can destroy the structure of vitamin C. So do not overcook this. If you're just taking a lemon peel, take the peels and then blend them and drink the juice. Or eat them pro. Like fermented cabbage, you eat it raw. It doesn't have sugar. It actually has salt, which means the salt will activate production of HCl in the stomach. And then vitamin C is very present in higher amounts. So not only shall you fix your gut, but you shall also absorb vitamin C in plenty. Okay, so do not be miscon. Don't, don't don't allow the system or your nutritionist to screw your head by just telling you to eat foods to get vitamin C from the foods. Ask them how about the sugar, because the sugar will actually kill the kidneys also. And remember, the kidneys are the ones that excrete the water soluble vitamins, including vitamin C. So if you kill the kidneys through sugar, now you retain vitamin C and the water-soluble vitamins. Now you have all the toxicity that comes with these vitamins again. Also remember, if you're taking the, the tablets, the vitamin C tablets from the pharmacy, they have added sugar. That's why they are sweet. That's why you can 
you can easily uh, unazimumunya. They have added sugar, that's a problem. Number two, they are non-absorbable. Number three, they are synthetic ascorbic acid. Now, synthetic ascorbic acid will be broken down to give you oxalic acid. Now, number one, kidney stones. The number one cause of kidney stones is calcium oxalate stones. That tells you in your kidneys, since the kidneys are excreting more calcium and are reabsorbing calcium, you have calcium in the kidneys. So if you bring in oxalic acid, then you react with this calcium, then you get calcium oxalate. That tells you you'll have kidney stones. And we all have kidney stones, but they are excreted through the urine because they are small. But the more you expose yourself to these kidney stones, they, come, they become bigger and bigger, and then they, they clog the, your, your, your kidneys, and then perfusion of the kidneys becomes a problem. That is kidney stones, and that will be a serious problem. Yes, spinach is also there. Nutrition is super sarani. Yes, spinach is also a rich source of vitamin C. You are going to change my life. I am actually doing it. And I'm doing it in the positive way and for the better. And that's why we exist. We exist to make sure those loopholes that all of you experience in healthcare are easily changed. So that you can benefit from the foods that you eat. Because the body is not interested in the foods. The body is interested in the nutrients that are available in the foods that you eat. And therefore, you need to eat nutrient-dense foods over balanced diets. Balanced diet is a fallacy that was designed by the food industry to brainwash you to eat carbohydrates. That's why they tell you to eat uh, ugali that has this size. Just moderate ugali if you're diabetic. Eat a fifth side of ugali. Eat two pieces of meat because meat is harmful to you. Don't eat saturated fats. Use good, uh, vegetable oils. All that nonsense. The best source of iron is omena, the sardines, and the seafoods. So you can imagine already now the mistake that you're doing through eating this. So you eat an apple or you eat your orange and you think you're you now hydrating yourself, you're now getting rich source of vitamin C, and then somebody comes and loads your head with one fruit a day will keep a doctor away. You eat that one fruit a day for, for a year and see how many times you'll see that doctor. So actually one fruit, fruit a day for a year will bring a doctor closer to you. You continue eating that morning breakfast failing to understand that was a marketing strategy by Nestle company that actually prepares a breakfast table, which is full of processed carbohydrates, the cereals, the milk, the sugar. So it brings that marketing strategy and then you fall prey for it. Then guess what? The big farmer is calling for the solutions. So let's continue. So that was vitamin E. So excess of vitamin E in the system is also harmful. How is it harmful? Because excess of vitamin E is actually causing you and now vitamin K was helping you to coagulate blood so that it prevents uh, blood uh, bleeding. So that is clotting. Now vitamin E plays the opposite role to vitamin K. So excess of vitamin E means you start bleeding. As you start bleeding through gums, through the skin, your blood vessels become so weak and you start bleeding. So excess of vitamin E is a problem. So for those people who are taking warfarin, I know people who have, who have chronic uh, problems with the, the chronic uh, conditions, the metabolic syndrome, specifically stroke and heart problems and the clotting. If you're taking warfarin, you know that five milligrams of warfarin every day, please do not overload yourself with vitamin E. Because vitamin E will actually worsen. Remember warfarin is also causing you to bleed. So it actually kills the clots. So it lyses the clots, break down the clots so that you have that flow. Again, vitamin E is helping you to prevent clotting. So you'll have double effects from these two. That means you can bleed to death. So if your parents are on warfarin, do not give them any supplement of vitamin E. Don't. Vitamin A, the most toxic one, in the fat soluble vitamins but is stored in the liver and the liver can help you detoxify it okay so if you don't have vitamin a in the system those women who have chronic acne all the time if you are not obese and you have acne just understand this is not estrogen because estrogen is responsible for cystic acne 
if you are treating your acne with vitamin A, it is not going away. It is time for you to start lowering insulin and then estrogen through diets and dropping those inflammatory foods. But if if you are lean, you've been eating healthy, and now you, you, you realize you have this acne that is not going away or the black spots, then understand that is vitamin A uh, problem, the deficiency. So then raise your vitamin A uh, supplements. But if you're pregnant, do not ever raise those vitamin A supplements because you'll get an abortion or you'll actually kill the CNS of the baby that is growing in your uterus. Don't do that. So it, vitamin A plays a role in vision. Vitamin A plays a role in cell division. That's why it's very important in babies, but in lower amounts. Vitamin A plays a role in blocking keratinization. Those people who have very rough skin. It also plays a role in fighting uh, viruses. So people who had COVID, vitamin A would have helped you a lot. And vitamin D. And then it has, it's an immune booster. So plays a role in boosting the immunity. That is vitamin A. So if you have not understood anything from this, understand that vitamins are classified into two. One side is fat soluble, the other which is D, E, A, and K, so DECA. The other side is water soluble, the vitamin C and the B vitamins. Understand that the water soluble vitamins can easily be removed from the body through the kidneys because they are soluble in water. And the kidney's role is to clear water soluble compounds. So once you clear them from the system, then the toxicity becomes an, a non-issue. But for the fat soluble vitamins, you cannot clear them from the system faster. That means you can get toxicity from these vitamins. But the B vitamins, the water soluble vitamins, you can easily get deficiency syndrome because they are cleared from the body so fast, unlike the fat soluble vitamins. Then understand that for the fat soluble vitamins, you cannot absorb them without consuming saturated fats. Also, for all the vitamins, you cannot absorb them if you have a messed up gut, if you have a problem with the liver the pancreas and the kidneys and also the intestines. So you need fixed intestines, you need a fixed liver, you need fixed kidneys for you to have maximum effects of these vitamins. And these vitamins, they are so common in very many foods, the liver, the eggs, the vegetables, the spices, they have this, all of them have this. So enjoy your liver, enjoy your fatty meats, enjoy your seafoods, enjoy your green vegetables, Enjoy your spices in organic way. Okay? So that is basically what we need. So, since we have done that and we have understood it, my people on TikTok, I need 100,000 likes from you people. Since you, you're not generous enough with those, uh, those gifts today, but I thank those people who already given us gifts. So for those of you who have given us gifts already, I appreciate you. Those people who have sent us super chats, we appreciate you. And that is basically what we we needed to clear about this fat soluble vitamins and stuff and water soluble vitamins. So let's have a con conversation with <coughs> some people here. If you have a question, just raise it. Let me see if there's a question on YouTube. I answer it before we continue. Now that we desisted from taking fruits due to fructose. Which food shall boost our immune system? Uh, Munyoki, I'm glad that you are here all this time. So you've already heard about immune boosting. Oh, there's no good question here. So we'll proceed. We we'll proceed to bring people in. I think my moderators have some questions, so I'll answer them. Do you need to eat according to your blood type? Do you need to eat according to your blood type? That is the, that's most that, that's not true. Listen, most of you people don't even know your blood types and your blood groups. <laughs> so how will you even know what to eat uh, according to your blood type? And remember, our our traditional people, they never knew their blood types and their blood groups. So, but they were very healthy. So, how did they eat according to the blood? Don't be lied to by the system with these questions that definitely don't make sense. Mm -hmm. Doc, I have fissured and graph geographical tongue. Is it vitamin deficiency? Yes, vitamin B6, B9, and B12. So focus on that, but you cannot absorb those vitamins without fixing your gut. So you need to fix your gut through fasting, eating salt, 
dropping inflammatory foods like wheat products, sugar, and seed oils. If you ask most people here, your blood groups, they have no idea. Some went to one lab, they were told one result, and then went to another lab, they were told another result. Some don't, have never taken that test. Some lied when they were handing over their results for the driving test. It's always a lie after lie after lie after lie. Yes, it's salt. It's salt in plenty, Monica. Even if you are hypertensive, eat salt. You need it. Salt softens your blood vessels and therefore reduces your blood pressure. But the system has lied to you to avoid salt because it causes hypertension. That's a lie. You will only stop eating salt when you have stage 4 and stage 5 kidney problem, kidney failure. That is end-stage kidney failure. That's the moment you, you, you deserve to stop salt. And for you to get to end-stage renal failure, that means you've taken so much carbohydrates, you've taken so much sugar in your system. So eat salt in plenty, whether raw or cooked, salt is salt. What is the best salt? Salt is salt. If you're targeting sodium chloride, any salt is the best. If you're targeting iodine, any salt is the best. If you're targeting more nutrients, Himalayan salt, sea salt, and the Celtic salt are better. Can diabetic also eat salt, even the hypertensive? Everybody is supposed to eat salt. Is it advisable to drink processed lemon? When you say the word, pro is it pressed or pressed lemon every day? Yes, you can eat pressed lemon every day. But make sure you protect your teeth because that acid, that, 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 uh, the lemon juice is highly acidic and can actually cause a problem with your teeth. Uh, and Mwangi, I'm blood group O positive. I'm glad you did that because again, when you get, when you're planning to get married, you need to know your blood group because it will be affecting your pregnancy. So you need to know your blood group. Most people don't know their blood group. They even lied on their driving license. Which oil will I replace my diet and affordable on Jukama olive oil is so expensive. Olive oil, I actually don't recommend olive oil for cooking because it can still oxidize. I always tell you people, tallow is the cheapest cooking fat, followed by ghee. Tallow is the beef fat. You just go to the butcher and tell the butcher to give you that, that animal fat. They always throw it away because nobody comes for it. And they can send it to you at around 200 shillings per kg and you'll make fat that is enough. The, this one here is uh, actually the tallow. So you can make it. You just take those, those, those animal fats from the butcher, go put it on a spree and then heat them at low temperature. It will render it out of it. We can't see. I don't know. This one. I put one uh, on TikTok. This, this is the tallow. Very nice smell. And it can stay for as long as, uh, for, for, for very long without getting bad. So make sure you make tallow on your own. Good, 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 good. Uh, 335 of us here. We appreciate you for being here. 53 of us on uh, YouTube. I was, uh, are you selling the tallow oil we buy? <laughs> Come on. That is for my consumption. But yes, uh, in future we'll we'll brand them, uh, we'll make them and sell them to you. The sauerkraut, tallow, uh, what else? Coconut oil. We'll make them and sell them. But we'll make we'll make sure we sell them at a very fair price so that you get to promote our channel through selling these products. Also, the healthy products. What about groundnuts? Groundnuts are rich in selenium and magnesium and zinc. Enjoy them. What about on your left? On my left, this is fermented cabbage. This is fermented cabbage. It's called fermented cabbage. This is sauerkraut. Just listen to that. Hey, it's so tight. Mm, this is fermented cabbage. It's like two weeks old. So for those of you who tell me I made my fermented cabbage and did not come out right, this, this is a bottle to put to, to, to make your fermented cabbage in. Very awesome. Okay. Make sure you do that. This is also one of it. Uh, this is an eight months old fermented cabbage. So just listen to that. Awesome, awesome, awesome. That's the best, best food for you. So yeah, we we teach 
water and drink water we don't treat water and palituko tunakula vitu zingine we make our own fermented cabbage the easiest thing to make tano is easy to make when you are free during the weekend you make your own foods whenever i eat food comes back to the throat you've been eating very bad foods you're using seed oils to cook you're eating wheat products you're eating bread you're taking juices and soda and then when you want to blame the foods that you're eating if you if you get reflux disease it's because this sphincter is loose the cardiac sphincter is loose you need to concentrate your stomach acid by fasting eating salt and healthy keto so it's okay to leave it out of the duck after two weeks yes you can take it out of the duck and uh, possibly uh in your rainbow beer but if you want it to ferment faster you can add sev and also you can put it in the duck makes it awesome awesome mm -hmm. do you keep it in the fridge or open in the fridge after opening the cabbage no you don't you know you see mine is here the other one is on, on, on the shelf so I, i just use it and i don't put it in the fridge but you can put it in the fridge but now refrigeration basically slows down the fermentation process we want it to ferment even more what is, what is your take on yogurt yogurt is good as long as greek yogurt or kefir you can use also kefir now yogurt do not buy yogurt in the supermarket that has sugar just make your own mursik take milk from a cow don't boil it put it in a gourd and then close it let it ferment for for some days and then enjoy it uh somebody else here Eunice Kamunya thank you so much for the super chat Eunice Kamunya we appreciate you for sharing your salary with us <laughs> so awesome when that text comes in and you feel like hey you've been preaching very inform good information here so if you're on, if you've not if you came in late this video will be on youtube it will be available so go there and just watch it it's a very detailed video you'll enjoy it you'll learn so much about it thank you richie you'll enjoy it good so let me bring in some people for have conversation but before that let me just answer some questions here so uh before I even answer the questions let me tell you these people who are in kitale kimilili and bungoma my people who are in kitale kimilili and bungoma around those areas one of my super agents is coming that side that's osike the guy will be the, the, that side on uh, possibly in the next two weeks you can interact with this gentleman you can let him assist you if you don't have the, his contacts he's always on my live so you can see what he can just follow him and dm him he'll give you the contacts what is very good at giving you this information so you he's coming over to the western region i might be in the western region maybe in uh, late november and december early december so yeah we are waiting from zambia thank you so much mofia bizo welcome to kenya so i'll be in western kenya in uh, late november and early december so we can interact wasike will be in around area around kimilili kitale and bungoma in uh, in next two weeks so you can interact with him when you're in that area send those gifts through him to us we will receive them with a lot of uh, great, uh, gratification and uh, yeah those groundnuts in western those arrow roots we need them here so i'll get them through him thank you so much for that uh, he will deliver trust me and if you want him to teach you to make fermented cabbage he'll be there so people from bungoma i repeat bungoma kitale and kimilili disturb this gentleman as much as you can we are going to make rounds in this country like we've never done it before mwambie ashukie tarbo kwanza from netherlands amsterdam life friends thank you so much for being part of us so good let's bring in some people to have a conversation here watching from south africa doc muzubeno thank you so much for being around now we are worldwide i'm even thinking we are going to make rounds in kenya and it says we are all over ah thank you so much for being part of us here wasike pitia huku i want to gift you and doc a liter each of kombucha dr kombucha has made it clear that we need that kombucha and by the way that kombucha just put a label on can be on my background also for marketing purposes so don't worry we got you dr kombucha you've always been supportive and been here for long and your your products are are approved so yeah anybody who needs kombucha the fermented products you can see dr kombucha for that matter 
Africa Culture from Germany, you are present. Welcome aboard. Watching from France, I like the program. I appreciate you. And Kim, thank you so much for being part of us. Keep saying hi to people from uh, France. Watching from Vindrek, Namibia, Doibo. Ah, this is awesome, man. PK is watching from Western Australia. So ladies and gentlemen, Zambia, Zikachepa. I have a lot of people from Zambia and a lot of people from Ghana and Nigeria. And my people from Kenya definitely never disappoint. Obilo, thank you so much for the gift. So ladies and gentlemen, if you're not on my anti-drill, thank you. If you're not on my YouTube, we are at 17,000. What are you waiting for? Why don't you be part of that generation? Let's make it bigger and better. Let's be hard because we are here to save life. We are here to question the systems. We are here to change your life and change our lives also because you motivate us as we motivate you. We are better as a team. So why don't you get to my, my, my YouTube channel and subscribe and let's do this. Health and Wellness Sport is the channel on YouTube. Health and Wellness Sport. That is where health lives. On my Telegram, we have also a channel called Health and Wellness Sport. That is where the mini library is. So all this information is shared there, including books that you can read and enlighten yourself. Okay, so good, good to have you here. Now let's go into the conversations with these people. Motusi BW. And as we continue these conversations, understand that tomorrow we are having another live and that live will specifically be a testimonial Tuesday. So we will have all the conversations that we want uh, uh, in terms of your testimonies to us tomorrow at 8 p.m. East African time. Be present. Bring your testimony. Let's do this. Yes, uh, Modusi. 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 Modusi is surprised. He's surprised. He's actually excited to be on this uh, platform. He's even wondering how he got here. Eunice Kamunya. Again, we say thank you so much for the super shirt, Eunice Kamunya. So tomorrow we are doing this. Tomorrow we are doing a testimonial Tuesday and to be our norm. So we already had that and we'll talk about testimonial Tuesdays. Nutritionist from Nutritionist from Kasarani. Um, nutritionist Kasarani. Ah, how are you? Um, I'm fine, thank you. Kindly, kindly raise your voice a little bit because we need to hear you clearly. Okay. Uh, you're doing a good job. I appreciate that. I'm a, I'm a satisfied nutritionist, okay. uh, but you're in another level. Okay. Uh, what you're talking about, <laughs> uh, diabetic uh, diet, mm -hmm. it's what we do. We tell them it's the size of the carbohydrates one is. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I've seen that plate. Uh, mm -hmm. The diabetic plate, then we use the... The, the hands to prescribe. So it's very common, yeah. but at least I'm, yeah. I've been doing your right uh, for quite some time, mm -hmm. and I think I'm becoming better and better every day. Yeah. Especially the issue of uh, acidity. Eh? Mm -hmm. You're doing it very well. Yeah. I've never did, did, did it in practice, mm -hmm. but now I'm coming to learn that uh, the issue of acid is not uh, all about telling the, the patient what we learned in school. Yes. You must have the practice of it. Mm -hmm. Like uh, you are coming up with those cabbages, yeah. fermented cabbages. Mm -hmm. The issue of uh, using fermented yogurt in the house, not yeah. in the supermarket. Yeah. Like for me, I used to tell my patient to take uh, yogurt from the supermarket. Yeah. So did I know? The spamiket one mm -hmm. has got a lot of preservatives, yeah. which destroy the gut. Good. Uh, the issue of maintained cabbage, for me, I used to tell them to take the, the raw cabbage. Yeah. But I did consider the issue of weight loss. Yeah. So I think I'm learning a lot about science in food. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of science in it. And I'm learning it from you, actually. Yeah. Uh, I have learned... I have, I have a degree in nutrition, but I tell you, I think you have a PhD, a permanent head damage on <laughs> nutrition. <laughs> and um, I, have, I 
I appreciate your vote of confidence. And actually, I want you people to start changing lives because you know the the, the modern nutritionists are so fixated in the in the syllabus and they forget the basics. So I appreciate you for being here. Somebody else, uh, there's another lady on this live that is called Mickey, also a nutritionist. So I want you to know that you are the people who are actually holding the backbone of health. And I know through you, we can change the whole world matters health. So definitely trust me, if we hold each other together, we can make it. The only problem is most of us like criticizing each other. We don't, we, we like fighting. We are part of the healthcare system that is supposed to encompass each and every department and make it better for the patient. And nutritionists are the backbone of that healthcare. So sometimes when you go to the, yeah. to, the, to, the to the words and you read the nutritional notes, you get surprised when they adv yeah. advise these patients to use uh, the seed oils and the vegetable oils. And in real sense, the basics of their condition is caused by these seed oils. So I want you to go and change those lives. Yeah. Never be shy to ask questions. Actually, we, I need to have your contact because we need to change the entire system. And people like you will help us to be hard even larger. Yeah. So you're not only here to learn, but you're also here to exercise and practice that. And then when your patients see that, they will actually be motivated yeah. because they, they actually think, because you see in hospitals, you get 60% of nutritionists are fat. And then you wonder, how are they going to help somebody recover from obesity when they cannot practice that? And we tell patients to eat that size of uh, carbohydrate, the fish size. And in the real sense, they've yeah. been eating all these type of carbohydrates. They have never recovered from diabetes, yet diabetes, is a dietary condition that can be reversed by diets. So we start asking these questions and don't realize we've been doing the wrong things the whole time. And remember this, the syllabus has been skewed yeah. to basically brainwash uh, small individuals, a group of individuals, give them titles, and then pay them good money, and then use these individuals to brainwash the whole masses. So you can change that and you can yeah. change that curse. Yeah, yeah. And they, I think it's good for you to write some several books, eh? I will do some several channels eh? yeah. at least to, to change the style which we study in school like for me all that science is from school but if i listen to your science and try mix it up mm. i'm getting something to understand like you said uh the issue of uh orange yeah you know for me all through and orange is very rich in vitamin c yeah but yes i know of fructose fructose in, uh, in fruits yeah but i did not put it into it affects the body. Yeah. So I keep telling people take uh, fruit rich in the citrus fruits actually. Yeah? Mm -hmm. That is the passion, Lemons. the orange, the lemon, those. Eh? Yeah. But they do not put into consideration the science of the sugar in that fruit and the way it is going to, if it is an overweight or obese person, yeah. this person will continue adding it. Thank true. you so much. I've learned a lot. You're welcome. You're welcome. Go and save life, and I appreciate you for coming through. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. This is what we need from people. We don't need people to only accept what we say, but we need people to understand the basics of the science behind it. Because again, remember this. There's, uh, there's a book that, uh, uh, if you're a medic, you need to read it. It's called Sapira's Art and Science of bedside diagnosis written by uh, i think it's jen m orient md that's a book that will open up your mind on very interesting stories about healthcare and stuff and how doctors argue and all things it's called sapira's art and science of bedside diagnosis now this book actually there's a quote that she wrote and that quote says this way as art of medicine is being lost as the art of medicine is being lost, the science is also threatened. As the art of medicine is being lost, the science is also threatened. Now, most people will ask you your papers, most people will ask you your research documents and all these things, but these people have nothing on their table. They are not advertising for any job. They are not asking you for an opportunity to change a life. But they are asking me for my papers. And I tell you, come on, I don't need to prove to you that I'm a doctor. Because it doesn't make sense to you. But how about those people who have practiced what I say and then they change? Does it mean that you will only start listening to me if I tell you that I'm a doctor and now I give you my papers? So if I give you my papers and then I'm a certified doctor and then I start lying to you, you will believe me. Does that mean so? Come on. 
Come on, don't do that. Don't do that. If you're asking for papers from anybody, then just make sure you're, you're providing an opportunity in terms of a job so that I advertise and then you analyze my papers and then give me a job. That would be better. And as I said, criticism has no creativity. It requires no creativity. You can just criticize anything, but you need to be creative. That means if you are creative, you'll be inventing something or you'll be learning a skill instead of criticizing something that somebody has done already. So it is very healthy to help me challenge myself. But how healthy is it to you who is trying to criticize? How is it building you? You need to also do something. Come it with an attempt and then say, hey, Daksari, I have this. This is what I understand. How can we do? And then we now have a basis of an argument. Now, once we get to an agreement, that is concordance. That means all of us have benefited from that argument. Okay? That's how it has to work. So do not kill the art of medicine. Because through that, even the science is compromised. It is threatened. Okay? So let's keep building each other. Good. Next person. Uh, let's talk to Audrey. Hello. Good evening. Good evening, Audrey. How are you? Uh, it's anti. It's anti drill, right? Yes. How are you? you? Fine, I kind of enjoy your topic as a doctor. It's so good. Thank you. Um, I have been, I have new problem. Yeah. I've done four new replacement, and uh, when I did this new replacement, you've done what? One just four new replacement. Okay. Four new, new replacements. Okay. Yeah, and I'm just like fifty nine. Yeah. Which and I stay fasting. Mm -hmm. From when I stay fasting, I don't eat in the morning. I mm -hmm. go to the gym, I swim, and I see less pain. Oh my, because my doctor told me he's going to do me a hip operation. Oh, and I started researching. Uh, yeah, he said because of my meal, I've done four new so He has to do me the hip. I said, but there's nothing wrong with my hip. Yeah. So I started going to swim because I heard you talking about exercise, mm -hmm. a lot of all this stuff. So I implemented it to my lifestyle. Yeah. And because of my meal, they're giving me vitamin D mm -hmm. to take it. Mm. You understand? Know, and you were talking about vegetables and all this. Um, I live in London and yeah. my son has a has a shop. And me, I incorporate most of these things you were talking about. Bell pepper. When you come, you have to have bell pepper, spinach. It's not all about just selling you something. You have to be healthy. Yeah. But we see our people, us. That's why I'm very happy you are preaching this to all of us. Mm. It's not just the fruit. I go to the gym and I see a lot of people, they offer me fruit. I say, I don't want. Yeah. When I'm in soda, I say, I don't want. They say, why? You don't eat fruit. I say, because there's sugar. And with my age and with my meal, I have to be very careful of what I put in my body. Sure. And they say, they say, auntie, you don't eat. I say, it's not all about eating. When you get to a certain age, and I heard you talking about it, that's why I followed you today. You don't have to eat too much mm. because for your age. Because I notice now, even though I've done four new replacements, I'm very active because I use the gym and there is so I want to ask you about the vitamin D. Yeah. Because they put me on vitamin D for life, one thousand ml, wow. which is recommended by the doctor. Mm. So how am I gonna go about that? So the question is, uh did they put you on uh, uh on vitamin K2? No. But you know you cannot you cannot assimilate calcium uh, into your joints without vitamin K two even if you take vitamin D and is it an, in tablet form? Yes, the tablet form is like uh, yes, the tablet form. But you see, you see, the reality is uh, these synthetic uh, supplements for vitamin B and magnesium they're not absorbable, and if they are absorbed, this in a small quantity, and then uh, they are very expensive. Okay. So the reality this is. One's from from? It's prescribed. It's okay. It's prescribed. It's like the highest one, 1,000 ml. Mm -hmm. So what should I do in terms of uh, food if I don't want to take the tablet? Let, let, let's, let's take this back a little bit. And uh, uh, do you know somebody called Batman? Yes, Batman invited me today. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Batman, Batman tells me he's a good friend of yours and he's, he's one of my people and uh, actually he's, he's on a way to recover from... Uh, to regain back his health. But anyway, that's a story for another day. So tell me about your, your body weight. What's your body weight? 
I'm like uh, 72 kilos. 72 kgs, okay. You said you're 55 or 59? 59. 59, okay. Good. What is your cooking oil? I use uh, a palm oil and olive oil. Ah, palm and olive. Do you consume any wheat products like chapati, spaghetti? Uh... No, no, I stop. Stop because I lived in Italy mm -hmm. and apparently my, my husband is Italian and he passed away and I saw his diet was very poor. Mm. So that actually gave him heart problem. His heart was blocked. So when that happened, I stopped eating spaghetti. I don't eat a lot of wheat. Okay. Even rice, I eat rice maybe once or twice a week. You you have a, a Nigerian accent. Do you eat fufu? No. Mm, good. Uh, in your in your family history, is there anybody who has suffered any chronic condition like weight, uh, obesity, hypertension, and diabetes? My mom, my mom died of hypertension, mm -hmm. diabetes, and and uh, yeah, hypertension, diabetes, and heart problem. She died in London. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, your nature of work does it involve outside uh, working or inside? Is it an indoor or an outdoor job? Outside, I have my son in a takeaway food shop. Okay. It's like a shop, a little shop, so I go outside, yeah. How often does uh, the UK receive sunlight? Ah, UK, there's no sunlight, it's very rare. Yeah, that's the reason why you're so that's why I, go, I go to the steam. I go to the steam room. I go to, I use the sonar steam room. That's also the reason, I don't know if that will help. That's also the reason why you're on vitamin D supplements. That's okay. But you need, you need a vitamin K injection or you need the fermented cabbage to help you get the vitamin K too, okay? I'll punch, I'll go to your YouTube and watch how I can do the fermented cabbage. Even the cabbage, I have to tell my son to put it in the diet for people. And then? Because. How often do you walk barefoot? Only when I go to the garden, maybe once a month. Once a month. You need to increase that to once a week. Okay. And for you to ease up also the pain in your joints and the back pains, you need also to have one day in a week of sleeping on the floor. Just put a... a uh, a small mattress on your floor without a pillow and then sleep on the floor, you'll have tremendous improvement in that pain. Okay. Yeah, so sleeping on the floor and walking barefoot, very perfect for living that pain. However, are you on any medicines, apart from these supplements, are you on any medicines like yeah. steroids? Yes. <laughs> if I bring the medication, you'll be shocked. But uh -huh. they gave me Slatropan, Slatropan, mm -hmm. Slatropan, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. Uh, omoniprazole, naproxen, Ooh, okay. amotropolene, mm -hmm. it's such a long place, I didn't just bring the book for you, but I'm going to tell you, I, I've lived in UK for 40 something years, I see my mom pass away, I saw my husband pass away, and I, I kind of noticed the way they passed away was through medicine, mm. the medication, this medicine, this... medication, yeah, I don't take them, this medicine mm -hmm. killed my mother. My mother, every day you go and see her, she will tell you all the medication she's taking. Yeah. After taking that medication, liver problem come, kidney problem started. Mm -hmm. My mother passed away. Then my husband he started with heart problem. Then Parkinson came. He stayed with 32 tablets, and I see him taking this tablet, and what? I see him pass away. Yes. So it kind of put me in a way that even though i'm in pain through i had a, my leg my, my my story of my meal i was born with two left foot and i've hey until you and to drill where where is the internet what happened ah oh, goodness somebody was coming oh please come back please come back Damn, that was an interesting story. Why did she disappear? Why did she disappear? Okay, okay, okay. I hope she comes back and we take her back. I mean, who else hasn't had that? I am Audrey. Auntie Drill. Is it Auntie Drill or something? Why am I calling her Audrey? She's back. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, welcome so, back. Yes, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. As I was telling you, 
I've lived in Europe for 42 years and yeah. I'm 59. Mm -hmm. I came from Nigeria at the age of 16. So I've seen all these things. So all these things, Batman invited me again and I came, I said, I need to follow you because all the things you are seeing, that is what I'm kind of implementing in my life. Yeah. My husband, for example, is Italian. I go to the gym. He never go to the gym. He just eat pasta, eat cheese, eat red meat. And when his problem came, mm. he started medication. Medication can't solve your problem. You need to do exercise. You need to control your guts. You need to do all this. Then one day I came, you talk about keto. Yeah. Keto diet. Healthy keto. So I want to know about healthy keto. Because you ask me a question, do I eat fufu? I don't. Those things, if you see me from my age, you will not have my, my wheat, all this gluten. It's not good. Mm. Like fruits. I don't eat a lot of fruits. Yeah. Mango is too sweet for me because my mother has diabetes. My mother has high blood pressure. My dad also is 80. He has high blood pressure. He has diabetes. So when I see all this, even my children, I advise them, stop sugar. When customers come to my son's premises they want sauces the white people i said don't put that it's too sugary yeah it's not good for you it's gonna destroy your manhood yeah. they start laughing and they don't take it good so when i had you talking to that lady you know i was so shocked i said this is the thing i preach to people yeah so this so i will try and tell my doctor for vitamin k or if i can take i don't like taking a lot of medication because i see it damage so many things yeah, please don't. The drugs, especially drugs that are taken orally through the mouth, these drugs have to go through the liver. And then most of them are treated through the kidneys. So you can imagine how the liver is training to get rid of these drugs in the system. It's, it is a problem. They, are, they will actually kill the liver and then you'll end up dying. Then they'll say, come on, she died of uh, uh, maybe blood sugars and stuff or uh, fatty liver. All these people, they died. My mom died at the age of 65. My husband at the age of 64. Too early. So, just, yes, only because of these things. Because at the end of the day, even though like my mom, she had high, a high blood pressure, they told her not to eat things like things, things like that have too much fat. My mom will eat cow food. Cow food has gluten. Yeah. When you boil cow food, it's gluten. And when you eat that, it's going to clog your chest. You start eating head of stuffs, you, and I told her, "See, this is going to finish you, mom." You understand? So, oh, I learned from those. So, Please. for my for my leg, you see the pain. Yeah, the vitamin D. That's what I take, but I don't take it every day. Yeah, I think I'll do. the only issue is that in the West, especially in the UK, there's very minimal sunlight, and therefore you cannot activate the cholesterol in your skin to give you the healthy vitamin D. But vitamin D tablets is okay. But now, taking vitamin D tablets without taking vitamin K2, that's a waste of time. So that means you must prepare that fermented cabbage or you can get a vitamin K2 injection. And then I want you to do this. All these 32 tablets are not making any sense. You cannot take 32 pills, pop them at once. And my, my dear, you're killing the system and the healthcare does not even care. These people are interested in your insurance card. These people are interested in your money. And then at the end of it all, after they have expected as much money from you as possible, they will discard you because they'll find a new customer. So what you need to do is drugs are the last in therapy. If you have pain, you can take that naproxen because it's a painkiller. Vitamin D, you can take it because of deficiency of the sun in the West. But make sure you combine it with vitamin K2 injection or vitamin K2 that comes from fermented cabbage or the spinach. So do that. And then for those drugs that are supposed to, like omeprazole, the drugs that are supposed to help you heal, from ulcers and gastritis, please drop them. You don't need that. What you need, what you need is fasting. What you need is healthy keto. Basically, you cook your meals in saturated fats: the ghee, the tallow, or the coconut oil. Those three. Please drop the palm oil because the palm oil is monosaturated, unsaturated. Sorry, and that is a problem. So drop the palm oil. Do not use the olive oil to cook your meals because olive oil is also mono unsaturated, so it can oxidize under higher temperatures. Use these three drugs. For your own benefit these three uh, fats to cook ghee tallow or coconut oil those can stand higher temperatures okay omeprazole will mess up your system one it will reduce your stomach uh, acid because it blocks the flow of hydrogen ions into the stomach 
that will reduce your stomach acid. That's a problem because you want that acid there in an adequate amount and very concentrated. Healthy keto, which is saturated animal fats, vegetables, and protein, which is fatty protein, will actually help you start producing HCL. And that HCL is the one that will fix your gut. Those gastric ulcers will disappear. And then consume salt. Even you're drinking water, add a pinch of salt. It will help you produce this HCL. It also help you balance your blood That's pressure and stuff. I don't think. I can't remember why, when I took salt. Oh, you need salt, my friend. You need salt. I swear. I can't, even if I cook jollof rice, I don't put salt. I can't remember whether I ate salt. You need salt. And you, also, you need salt. And you also need to drop rice. Okay. Basically, go on a carbohydrate-free diet. Go on a carbohydrate-free diet and then start fasting. Take two meals a day, one at midday and the other one at around 6.30 to 8.30 in the evening. Period. And then once in a week, what about once in a week. Pardon? They gave me a matropoline to make you sleep. A matropoline. I don't know. You don't, you, don't, you don't need any drug for sleep. What you need is the good diet. Good diets when you eat that protein, it will be broken down to give you tryptophan, which is an amino acid that you absorb. Once you absorb this tryptophan, it is the one that will be used to synthesize serotonin and melatonin. These are the two hormones that are involved in regulation of the biological clock, the sleep and awakefulness cycle, the circadian rhythm. They control that. So if you have a messed up gut, of course you'll have sleep problems. Drop drugs for sleeping. Okay. I mean, tryptophan is basically an antidepressant. And one of its side effects is to induce sleep. So yes, you'll sleep as a side effect of amitriptyline. How about how about the side effects that comes in as a result of weight gain? How about the the, the suicidal thoughts that will come thereafter? How about the anxiety that comes into it? How about the dry mouth? How about the gastric issues, the ABCDs, anorexia, blood vision, constipation? Sometimes. The, 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 the diarrhea, you get some severe diarrhea. And in men, erectile dysfunction. How about that? So they're giving you an antidepressant to help you get sleep. And then you get all these side effects. Yes. You don't I'm need it. You don't need it. What you need is you need to fix your diet so that your bones start to rejuvenate. You also need to fix your diet and fasting so that your stomach gets to fix itself and then you absorb nutrients from diet adequately. So no carbohydrates, no seed oils, uh, no wheat products, no nothing, no carbohydrates in general. Just go on a protein, fatty protein, and vegetable diet. And then start fasting. So fatty protein. But fatty yes, fatty protein. protein. If you go fatty. to buy beef, don't buy lean beef. Buy fatty meat. Like the ribs and those places, yeah. Yes, and make sure that they are fatty, they have fat. Okay. Because well, you need that fat. Important. You need that fat to fix your inflammation. Cholesterol fixes inflammation in the system. So you need that. So you do, you do two meals a day for four days in a week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, you eat at 12 noon, and then you eat at 6.30 to 8.30 in the evening. And then Friday, after you eat at 8.30 on Thursday, the next meal you'll eat is 8.30 on Friday, which means a 24-hour fast. You will see tremendous change in what you're going through. You do not need drugs for this. Trust me on this one. Okay. No drug will fix your joint problems. No surgery will fix your joint problems. You've had four already. Four surgeries and nothing is changing. Now you're going for the fifth one, the hip surgery. Nothing is changing. That tells you there's something that is being done wrong. And this doctor is just trying to maintain you and he extract as much as as much money as possible from you and your insurance cover. The doctor told me, oh, if first time he has done a wrong knee operation, he's been doing it for 25 years. Oh, God. Please, we, we, we need nutrition. What we need is nutrition. We don't need the doctor. We need nutrition. So just fix your kitchen. Just that you you will be here to give us your testimony in the next three to four months. Trust me on this one. Because I used to I still use walking stick for like past four four years. I use the stick if I want to stand up. I use the stick. You understand me? Yeah. Some places I feel embarrassed when I'm going. I have to if I don't use the stick, I start limping. You know, I was not using stick before. You know. Listen, you don't know? don't worry about anything else. Only worry about what is immediate, important, and true. The truth is, no surgery, no drug will help you fix your situation. That is one. What is immediate is you have to change your kitchen. You have to change your cooking oil to ghee, coconut oil, or butter, or tallow. 
Then you Mustard. need to tell is the animal for the beef fat. Okay, I had to talk. I'll go and ask my butcher. Um, you say cook it slow and use it. Yeah. And I saw it in the bottle. Yeah. Yeah. So that is tallow. Those are the cooking fats that you use. Anything that is not that, please drop it. Then drop all carbohydrates, whether processed or whole. Drop them. Simply go on a protein-rich diet, make it fatty protein, and vegetable-rich diet. You can use all spices as long as they are organic. And then cook your meals using these saturated fats. That is ultimate treatment. Then cook on two meals a day for four days in a week, and the rest three days go on one meal a day. Thank me later. Okay, thank you. So things like spinach are okay, yeah? You, Kale. you can eat every form of vegetable. Okay, so the fruits is like a no-no. There's the only fruit that you can consume is an avocado. And that is what I take. That is the only fruit. The I only eat a lot of avocado in my salads. If you have to eat lemon, if you have to eat the lemon, please only blend the peels. Okay. Yeah. Just the peels. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, for, you. thank you for sharing your story. It was very insightful and it's very helpful. I appreciate you for coming through. Thank you so much. And I hope you. that you thank receive. Me too. I'm going to help a lot of people. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I've learned from you. Thank you, sir. Have a good night. Thanks. Yeah, this is, hey, this is just, now you see what your systems are doing to people. Ultimate result. Things being popped by one person. How about the liver? How is that liver? Ladies and gentlemen, protect your liver as much as you want that liver to protect you. You? Hey. Well, I thought I had seen it. <laughs> I thought I had seen it. And Audrey, thank you so much for coming through. We are going to change your life. Thank you so much, Francis, for that general, uh, general, the generosity. We are going to change her life, and she will one day walk into that doctor's consultation room with no stick, with no pain, with nothing. No consultation fee. Thank you so much, nutritionist. Nothing. She will walk into that room, lost weight, looking very young, looking very healthy, and walking, and no surgery. She'll save money for surgery because they... Let me tell you, if you have a healthy insurance cover, we we like that because every single test that we do with that insurance cover, we double it. At least if you're paying in cash, you feel the pinch of paying in cash, so you start asking questions. But if you're paying using an insurance card, there is this thing that gets into your head and you think, because I have an insurance cover, what a cutter took an insurance, they just cut it off the money from the insurance and I have no problem. But remember, they are extracting that money from you as much as they can. So you can imagine she has been given vitamin D supplements and nobody gave her vitamin K injection. I mean, which class did these doctors go to? Which school? Oh, hey. let's bring in the last person. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and Dill's story has just finished. And she's one of us. She's an African. She's very humble. She's willing to learn. And you can imagine, this is just so... Uh, the big pharma is truly in business. They even did surgery on the wrong knee. Solomon Mashari, can you imagine that? That she just went through the wrong surgery. <laughs> And the doctor can stand there and tell people, tell her actually, that I'm sorry I did the wrong surgery this time around. And she, he is even telling her that I've done these things for the longest period of time, for I think 25 years or so. What the? Ay, ay, ay. That story was scary, Solomon. That story was scary. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, Awilo. Yes, sir. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Talk to us, bro. I I happen to be one of the testimonial group. Yeah. I, I come from Nairobi. Mm. I work with the, one of the arms of the government. Mm -hmm. So, uh, my, my story started uh, when we went for a retreat. We have a medical cover. Yeah. 
So there was this general uh, medical body checkup, mm -hmm. which was done when we had a retreat at, uh, in Mombasa. Yeah. So there are medical practitioners who came to teach people on the medical, whatever. So I, I also started becoming curious that why are they so much concerned about uh, trying to know the root cause of uh, with the problems you have, mm -hmm. but they don't have solutions on how to treat them. Exactly. So when I questioned, mm -hmm. uh, already I went for the medical test. So they told us that, okay, your results will be sent yeah. later. And uh, the, while the results have been sent, mm -hmm. if you get a call from them, yeah. then they'll advise you on... Uh, whether to go to their medical facility yeah. or not. Mm -hmm. So it, I didn't get my results. Mm. So I, I, I asked for their number. I started calling. I was told the doctor was not there. Yeah. There were several excuses. So the day the doctor mm -hmm. was there, uh, gave me a call. Mm. Imagine she started quarreling. That you know you've been making noise and we told you 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 have complications, a mm. lot of complications. Then I told them which complications. I went to another medical facility in Nairobi mm -hmm. which confirmed that any complication. Mm -hmm. But uh, the complications I've been having was the issue of H. pylori. Yes. And uh, they also... Uh, the, the, they had also done a new surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 med, the doctors had also done a new surgery on me hey. at a uh, current hospital. Yeah. At, uh, since I started following you, mm -hmm. I'm telling you I've come from 97 kgs. Yes. I'm now 88 kgs. I'm feeling so light. Yes, sir. I sleep so well. I am so happy. The first day I started fasting, yeah, I felt that uh, some small headache. Yeah, but the second day I just felt it's normal. Mm -hmm. Like today, the last meal I took was by two. The last three weeks, yeah, I'm just taking my the first meal maybe by eleven. Mm -hmm. I take by eight or by seven. Yes. But I'm okay. Bro. Yes. This is why That's I why do I this. I keep on following you, bro. bro. This is why I do what I do, bro. Yeah. I change one life and I feel so proud like I just changed the whole world. <laughs> bro. Ah, ah. Congratulations for losing weight, bro. I'm going to advocate for this. I'm bro. going to advocate for this. Bro, I appreciate you for being here. You know, that's you know, some of your stories are the ones with a good job, bro. Thank, thank you, sir. You know, if some of your stories are the ones that just keep us going because you people are so amazing, and I wish those people who keep arguing about this information can just try. Just try. You can you can imagine I've never met you, we have never interacted on any platform, not even on WhatsApp. But you just came in contact with my yeah. video and then decided to try it, and then boom, we are here. Bro, great testimony. I've shared with it uh, in a number of uh, platform, platforms I am in. Yeah. I'm with. yeah. But uh, some of my colleagues, some of my friends, some of my relatives, uh, they, they, they're saying that they're seeing some improvement. But I told them, just keep on keeping on. Yeah. The result. Always requires the patience. Ah, Willow's internet has disappeared. Ah, ah. Oh, it's a... ah his internet is quite uh, stubborn. So, ladies and gentlemen, I think tomorrow will be a blast. <laughs> Given the type of information that you're just bringing up already, tomorrow will be a blast. So, embrace yourself with that testimony for tomorrow. We are going to bring the roof down with those testimonies tomorrow. And I'm not surprised by how fast and how uh, uh, drastic our channels are growing. It is not by chance. 
It is because people can relate to what I speak and everybody understands their journey. Trust me, you, those people who follow what I say, they are the same people who have done everything in quotes to try to change their lives and nothing happened. Then they bump into my video, just one, and then they get interested and then they try it out. They will argue. Those people who are taking kids will still argue and tell me how fasting cannot heal their ulcers, how I'm so misinformed and stuff. Until you try it out just once. And then you realize you've been doing the wrong things all through. You realize you've wasted a lot of money on unhealthy foods and medication and healthcare, and you start saving money. No wonder most of you send me money without asking for it. I appreciate all of you for being on this live. Let's do this tomorrow again. So let me bring in one more nutritionist and one, just maybe two people. Uh, Dr. Jella. I'll do uh, Dr. Gela, I'll do Mickey, and then I'll do uh, Henry. I think that will be enough for today so that we can sleep, and then tomorrow again is another day. A doctor at Kenish told me that, let me read this, uh, yeah, Paul June. Dr. Lewis, congrats, really, you are doing an amazing job. Yes, yes, I really appreciate Dr. Gela. You are really amazing. Dr. Gela, just hold, on, just, really. just, just hold on a minute. Just listen to this. Eh? A doctor at Kenyatta National Hospital told me that my firstborn son died as a result of being done longer dialysis. Four hours. So somebody lost their son and then the claim was that this son was done dialysis for four hours straight. <laughs> anyway, Dr. Gela. Ah, Dr. Gela's internet. Dr. Gela. Kindly, kindly drop and come back again, Dr. Gela. Your internet has become uh, problematic a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Nice listen, Dr. Lee. Keep it up. Alpha Diba. Thank you so much, Alpha Diba, for being part of my YouTube channel. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're on TikTok and you've never visited my YouTube channel, you're missing out on a lot. Health and wellness spot on YouTube. Let us smash that 50,000 immediately and then smash that 100,000. We will get to a million, inshallah. Mickey. Yes, Dr. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you for being consistent. Yes. <laughs> Talk to us. Now, uh, I would like I would first say that today I'm very excited to see a nutritionist here because I've been here all along, yeah. all alone as a nutritionist. Yeah, and to convince, uh, we think that we know everything about food and no one should tell us anything about food. We know it all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> nutritionist from Kasarani, welcome here. And here is where are you? The year is home. This is the home of unlearning. <laughs> yeah. Hey. So you see the topic today, yeah. about the topic today, uh, about the vitamins. Yeah. You see, in class we were taught about the vitamins, but the, 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 the topic was not that broad. Mm. It was just the, the, the benefit part of it, the, the sources. But you see, about the sources, they were demonizing meat. Yeah. So we were told the only sources are, are vegetables fruits. and fruits. Mm. Yeah. Especially orange. You never you never learn a, a vitamin that has no orange as a source in and, that class. And you know, the same, same people are the ones who teach you biochemistry and metabolism. And they tell you metabolism of fruits uh, basically goes to the channel of fruit, fructose metabolism. And fructose is broken down to give you triglycerides, which are basically fat. And then after they do that, then later on they tell you fruits are the healthy sources of vitamins. Who bewitched us? Yes, they leave it. They even leave it at there at the triglycerides. They don't continue. Uh, it's left there. Then about the toxicity of vitamins, it's not there yeah. completely. Nutrition from, from Kasarani can bear me witness. It's not there. Yeah. I was even surprised to see that there is toxicity part of vitamin A. I never knew. Ah, sure. Yes. 
Even the neck exams, you never get such a question. <laughs> Where? <laughs> yeah. We need, we, need, we, need, we need to change. And that, yeah. I, really, I really feel sad for students who are doing nutrition, is, nutrition because when you tell them the nutrition and dietetics, when you tell them uh, what I'm teaching, it, it actually comes as a surprise to them because it totally contradicts what they learned in the syllabus. Even though they sit there and understand fructose metabolism, they understand all these things, they don't have an option because they have been assimilated in the syllabus and it becomes just a serious problem. So for them, actually you are as good as done the syllabus and then from there you can now start questioning the syllabus. Because if you follow what I say, Ay, 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 ay. There will be a serious problem. You will fail your exams and nobody will care. And that will be the end of your journey. Yes, yes. Yeah, so you need that license. So do what they want you to do, get that license, then from there, now start questioning that system. You see, the, the hospital I was, mm. the hospital I was doing a attachment specifically, mm. there, there is this patient, uh, a child, mm. uh, he was brought by by a boy his mother to hospital yeah he had h pylori mm -hmm. then the the, the the parent was questioning the doctor mm -hmm. why is this happening why does why is my child in this condition mm -hmm. then the doctor told the parent go see a nutritionist then mm -hmm. he came into the office then he met me and the, my supervisor now yeah now you'd see i will not handle the case because my supervisor is there he yeah sure to handle the case mm -hmm. So this, my supervisor told told, told the, the parents that these things happen and you should not know <laughs> You should see that then, parent looking at this the, this, he, this supervisor and wondering, I'm looking up yes. to you for help and you're telling me you don't even understand it. Then the, the supervisor is sneezing and coughing. Yeah. He has like three handkerchiefs. Yeah. <laughs> then then he, he goes ahead and tells the, the parent and this this your child has dry mouth have, have you fed the child uh, go get some juice or bananas feed your child god yes i remember that one incident i i didn't i didn't see anything wrong until now mm. i got to know it's wrong yeah you can imagine if if if, if the supervisor says that then definitely it's he must be right i mean you know he's the supervisor mm -hmm. right he must be right then Yes, then now you get me for what with diabetic people telling them now you can take whatever you want to take, but so as long as it's in, in moderation. Yeah, not knowing that a slight increase in glucose will cause a spike in insulin. It doesn't matter your moderation. So you, you can imagine this: you telling a diabetic patient to moderate sugar. Just just think about it that way. This is a diabetic patient and we want them to recover from diabetes. And we are telling them it is okay to eat carbohydrates and sugar, just moderate it. So you're telling this patient it's so and actually our our seniors can still go on a world diabetic diabetes day and a world kidneys day and cut a cake to celebrate that yeah. day. They cut a cake. So they're actually telling the masses that it's okay to eat these sugars in moderation. If you have a kidney problem, you can enjoy your cake. Can you imagine that message? Yes, exactly. Uh, even uh, even at that period of time, there is this patient. He had, she had finished uh, a chemo session. Yeah. Then his people came to celebrate him with a cake, and the doctors were there laughing and enjoying the cake. And and, and they have this this two small cups, and they are cheers, cheers, cheers with these small cups which have soda. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and so it's okay for us to eat soda yes, yes. and again give you hope. You know, we can give you, you know, hope. Andre, ah. Andre, I'll go meet, I'll go meet that supervisor, and I, I swear I'll challenge that supervisor. I will. Please, please be, be careful. You might receive a Kidero's laugh. <laughs> <laughs> because even today, hey. today's he is overweight. Yeah. He and I'm one. He cannot see very well. Uh, he is that I think if he's not diabetes, is hypertensive. By virtue of him putting on glasses and being obese, that is pre-diabetes or diabetes. You can trust me on that. Yes. The only problem is yeah. they go yes, to the laboratory. He's still in that facility. Yeah. So you know what what he's they do? Still in that facility. Mm -hmm. they, they go to they go to hospital and take a blood sugar test and it turns negative and they say, oh, you know, I'm not diabetic. 
you see blood sugars are a symptom of diabetes so it is not if you if you still have a functional kidney uh, pancreas that is still straining you will still have normal sugar levels in your blood even if you eat uh, cakes but how about the sugar that is stored in cells in form of fat that is where diabetes is diabetes is not in blood diabetes is in the body cells so if you take a blood sugar test that's yeah. that, that's even lying to you it's actually telling you you're still doing well and the real sense is your your cells are full of fat and that fat is basically glucose yeah yeah so one day we will be understood as, as, one day will be understood as long as i blame myself as long as i blame myself for being overweight and stuff i also blame that supervisor i expected him to be better yeah i expected him to be a mentor for me mm. because i don't understand our whole supervisor who is like is the is the senior of uh senior nutritionist in that facility mm. even to date he is there but he is an lt himself and it doesn't question someone that why are you overweight and your nutrition is no it doesn't because because being fat is considered as being healthy and being rich yeah yeah if you lose and weight I, if you lose I weight you, if uh, if you lose weight by all means somebody will think either you you are suffering from depression you've been left by your boyfriend your marriage is struggling and is on the rocks you don't have money your job is stressing you uh, there's always something you you are you you stepped on the wrong wire you entered the wrong hole so it's always a, something to demonize weight loss yeah yeah so don't don't so even i wish one yeah. day yeah one day when you get uh, when you get time yeah. you talk about minerals because that's that's also a very shallow class yeah i also realized that i'll, I'll actually go deeper into mineral deficiencies and uh, and and their and their effects and the benefits yeah thank you dr i was just here to say thank you thank you so much for the insight i appreciate you making for being consistent thank you for also passing by to give us your insights as always a pleasure talking to a nutritionist because these are the backbones of health care thank you so much was sick for your super chat whenever the strong tide calms we shall all know those swimming naked hey this gentleman is a wise man throws in a prophetic verse like this one but this is a heavy one for us to meditate upon when you're going to sleep thank you asika for that super chat whenever the strong tide calms we shall all know those swimming naked so basically those tides are just hiding us eh? as we swim naked the tides are hiding us and then <laughs> and when the storm comes you're like hey 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 i'm naked <laughs> so yeah deeper meaning hii ni ile kiswahili maana ya ndani na maana ya nje Hey, let me repeat that for you gentlemen and ladies whenever the strong tide comes we shall all know those swimming naked hey yeah <laughs> uh, yeah 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 yes doc uh, will you be here again tomorrow yes lisbon we will be here tomorrow for testimonial tuesday at 8 pm east african time until your testimonies are done so for today bear me if i didn't bring you in to have a conversation i promised to have three people so those are two there was one person who was supposed to come in that was henry omondi so he'll be the last person so yes thank you so much for those of you who have been here if you're not on my youtube channel please get there hit that subscription button hit that notification bell because guess what once you do that you motivate us and once you do that we in exchange give you healthy information every other time in form of a video just in case you missed out on our lives thank you so much for all of you for being part of us tonight as we talk to henry omondi to finish it up for us uh, let's see how omondi says omondi henry omondi tomorrow and omondi's internet is having problems so let me just exchange him with uh, this other gentleman called uh, alara abuya as the last person we are contacting tonight so tomorrow bring those testimonies we will have that conversation tomorrow tomorrow i'm not talking about anything apart from your testimonies onara abuya yeah. hello sir hello how are you how are you today doctor i'm doing fine how are you uh i'm fine to thank you for your uh, educated educative channel and uh, we are all benefiting from it You deserve it. So remotely without you knowing we appreciate your effort doctor. You deserve it. And uh, my my daughter who's doing medicine is uh, your I, I just mentioned you to him to her. Yeah. So that she can following you closely. 
please. Anyway, yeah. Uh, I have uh, not really a testimonial today, but I have a, a, a major problem. Mm -hmm. I just went and uh, gone uh, thyroid uh, thyroidectomy. They just removed all my thyroids out uh, two days ago. Uh, so it was diagnosed as a goiter, but uh, it was almost three and a half inches deep, mm -hmm. and it was uh, dipping down into my chest. Two inches down into my chest around my neck here mm -hmm. and if you, if you can see it you can if you have to see the video but i think you don't see if you're allowed to see the video anyway it mm -hmm. was taken out mm -hmm. but the funny thing is yeah i, I was never given any antibiotic i was not given even i would just prescribe a potassium mm -hmm. tablets only okay. after the and i said in the hospital for only two days mm -hmm. There's no anti-inflammatory. I don't know why. I don't know what type of surgeries you guys are doing these days. <laughs> but is this is that normal? Uh, I, I want I want I want to get deeper into the thyroid problems and go it uh, on a, on another video. So I'll reserve my comments on that. But I wanted to do this. Huh? I wanted to. You see on my bio, there's my contact there. Okay. And if you don't have it, just take it right now. Zero seven fourteen. Are you in Kenya? Yeah, I'm in Kenya. Yeah, yeah, 0714. 0714. Let me go to the other phone. Number? Yeah, my, you can use my bar. It'll lead you to my WhatsApp. Text me on WhatsApp because if you call, the call will not come through because my number is... Uh, uh, there's, a, there's, there's a way I limit the call. So please text me on WhatsApp and then we'll have a conversation that I'll save your number. You can be able to call me. Sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah we'll have a conversation about that. So don't worry. Okay. Yeah. Good. Uh, let me say this. Uh, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for being part of us. You gave us 112,000 likes on TikTok. You gave us 370 people on for the last two and a half hours. This has been just amazing. Thank you for those people who have been on YouTube continuous from eight all the way to now. It has been very helpful. It has been very motivating. Remember this, all of us don't need motivation. What we need is discipline to stick to diets. We need discipline to fast. We need to fix our guts for us to start absorbing nutrients adequately. Drugs can never salvage you from any condition. Challenge that doctor. They are not in any way special. They have not been bestowed any prophetic powers over you so challenge them ask them these questions and always be vigilant because we need people who understand what they are doing and health is not in the syllabus health is on the ground so if you're a doctor start practicing ground health more than the syllabus health do not regurgitate the syllabus you're not a conveyor belt of the big farmer understand healthcare understand these things and then help other people recover all in all it was vitamins and vitamin deficiencies Thank you so much. If you've learned something from here, go share it with other people, share our lives, share our videos, go to YouTube and subscribe. And above all, thank you so much for being part of us. Until next, oh, tomorrow we're having a, our testimonial Tuesday. Testimonial Tuesday. Okay, so we are, we are bringing that proof down with those testimonies tomorrow. So let's flock here with our testimonies. Testimony, sorry. Uh, let's, let's just interact from 8 p.m. until late until your testimonies are over. Until then, see you tomorrow in another live. So we'll communicate on what we'll talk about on Wednesday, but tomorrow is specifically testimonies. So I welcome you all, bring those relatives here, let them understand help from here. Otherwise, thank you for being part of us. Have a good night and see you tomorrow. Same time, same place. Adios.